So, welcome back to episode 10, I think, of Aftermath, which is our somewhat weekly D&D game. Bi-weekly, but also weekly. Uh, it's complicated, it's also not. We play a different game the other day, uh, the other week, day, other day, the other week, and um, it is the same game, but also not, and kind of related, and if you want to know why, you probably shouldn't be starting at episode 10, so go ahead and watch that. Uh, Sounds of Fate. I mean... Yeah, um, but where we left off, because I think we'll just start with a quick recap, is our illustrious band of um, poor unfortunate souls were transported magically via box, which is a thing that happened, from their hometown of Coria, which is a... It, it's actually a single train, but it is a, also a city. It's, it's basically the same thing, it's a city-sized train. Or a train on rails, if you want to call it that. Not a train, a city on rails, if you want to call it that. And um, they discovered a mythical, mythical, magical box thing somewhere near um, there. Uh, somewhere just slightly north, which eventually sent them about 120 miles south towards where they encountered a, sing a similar train that has been uh, somewhat flung up and... Um, it's significantly damaged, and it's um, against a mountainside. And they are now somewhere over a mountain, uh, just below it, somewhat, uh, wondering what is going to happen to them next. And I think we're just going to jump back on into it, because my intros are absolutely glorious. So you can all shush with your intros. Flawless intro. All I'm going to say is train on rails is my new favourite thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I think this intro was off the rails. One of these days yeah. we're going to get scripts, okay? But one of these days... Look, you mean this, you're this, gonna this get a script. I, I'm going to get a script, <laughs> yes. Look, we slowly get better, okay? I mean, we started with, we started with like, a still image at the start, and now we've got, like, overlays, and we, we now have uh, a fancy new thing that uh, I'm sure you've noticed, which now shows everybody's stats. So if anyone's interested in... Uh, and you know, 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons, you can now see people's stats showing up on screen. Uh, just the stats, AC and hit points, but it gives you a rough idea of what everyone's good at and what they're not particularly good at. Um, hey, you know what would be cool? I'm good at stabbing things. And so, it will be, uh, so now the viewers will also be able to tell that Saudi is obviously the thinker. Yeah. I'm good at yeah. dealing the wrong damage type. <laughs> <laughs> Let's yeah, well, you go. that one for yourself. Where, where yeah, are we yeah. at right now? Are we, like, at the train or are we near it? We're so, there. I believe where we left off was you were on your route to the train. It was yes. uh, approaching sort of midday, if I remember correctly. And uh, just sort of as you're beginning to arrive at the underside of this huge train that is somewhat half buried because it has to be to maintain its position and also half sort of sticking out of the mountainside. Um, it, is, it appears to have taken significant damage from just about anything you can imagine. But also nothing, because you have no idea what could possibly cause damage on this kind of scale. It's easily 30 floors high, which is uh, 100 feet. 100 feet? I think it's like 300 feet. If I... Yeah, yeah it's 300, it's 300 feet. feet. Yeah. It's about 300 feet tall. So 30 floors. Um, and it's about as wide as it is tall. It's, it's a really big train. Uh, so big, in fact, that they don't have uh, one rail with, like, sleepers and things between. They're, they're just two separate rails. Um, and there's this massive train carriage. Your cannoneer, one of the sort of three train carriages that you can see, the rest of them appear to sort of wrap around the mountain out of view. Um, and so far, you've only kind of seen these three and maybe hints of other ones uh, at the edges occasionally. But um, you're, you're near this one in the centre, and the other one's uh, a ways walk, but you could probably make it... Uh, do we know the history of this place? Um... You... Go ahead and... Does anyone have proficiency in history? Of course I do. Of course I don't. Of course I don't. Okay, so anyone who has proficiency in history can go ahead and roll... Um... A, a history check. That. Mind uh. you... What you get may not be correct. It may be speculation. I need to go wash my hands real quick. I'll be back. Not too bad. Not too bad. If you I'm don't consider the plus seven. Tony <laughs> is still on the roll. 
Yeah. And oh yeah, it's just you, isn't it? Okay, so Matthias, <laughs> seventeen. Um, this train, you have a herd of these. There are a few of them around, uh, destroyed. There were once more trains similar to Cory, more uh, moving cities, but they are. They have been damaged or destroyed long, long ago. Um, someone far beyond um, written or unwritten memory. And mind you, written memory is, of course, limited by the arcane flux. Because over time, books fall out of... They get forgotten about and lost. Not in my library, damn um, it. Not in your library, but uh, over a thousand years or so, that information can easily become lost. And so... You're not, you've no idea when this happened or why it happened, uh, other than it is beyond, sort of effectively beyond history. It is a very long time ago. Um, you also know that such sites are often fraught with peril, um, to quote somebody, and they can also hold great rewards, great secrets. Sometimes uh, they're, they're, they're a favourite of the adventurous type. Um, and especially people like yourself, to go look and see if there's anything that still remains. Uh, but there's a lot of things that oh are very boy. not understood about them. Oh boy, this is right up Matthias's alley. Yeah. So is he going to say anything to anyone, or is he just going to... This is right up the entire party's alley, actually. <laughs> yeah, can I, like, kind of scout the head nice. of the group flying? Um... Let's well, we were coming flying. up on the train, right? Yeah, you're kind of coming up on it from it, it, below. It was the was the evening. Um, midday. it's kind of midday ish. Oh, it's still midday. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah, because you left early morning and you walked for a couple of hours. Guys, before we go in, you do know that these trains are often dangerous, right? Well, I and figured. Not just the trains, but anything from beyond history, effectively. Most oh, that's what it was for. I want a good fight. Most of the areas that are not civilization in this world are dangerous. Yeah, but anything that's a relic of ancient history is more dangerous. You can also sell it for a lot of money, so that... Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah, a lot of money. It means ale. Ale's My good. eyes brighten that money. <laughs> Imagine everyone's this. <laughs> oh, I everyone just, I wants forgot. money. I still look like a drow. Gilly just kind of looks indifferent to a, to a degree. I still like look like a drow. On the books. Yeah, true. But I like yeah. the most money. Matthias, come on. Work on. Why? I think what we should do, rather than call it dibs or whatever, we should just get everything. Uh, everyone can take a couple of items if there's anything you want. And the rest we just sell, and we split the gold equal, because that's speaking fair. Of, speaking so. of magical things, can you re-identify my necklace? It doesn't seem to work anymore at some point. I can do that at some point. Yeah. Um, and I kind of look over my shoulder looking at Coria. When's home meant to depart? Oh, oh we'll be fine. Two or three days. I mean, yeah, we can catch so up So not a... It's not yeah. that fast, so. How many rations do we have? I don't have any. Uh, That's a good start. Yeah. Well, I think I have I don't ten. Have any either. But back I think um, I have ten, but I, have, I can forage some food for us if you, if I we need to. We can forage food. We should be fine. Yeah. Sure. Well, we don't run any more. We don't run any more mushrooms. <laughs> sure thing then. Well. I have ten rations on my ten rations on myself. We have plenty of time to turn this place upside down, right? Come on, let's get to it. Yeah, yeah, let's let's get all the loot. So you're gonna I play a mark song as we walk up to the train. <laughs> yeah, go right ahead. Yeah. Twenty-seven performance. Yeah, it's a pretty good marching song. Is it the Imperial March? <laughs> <laughs> if it is, don't harm it. Um, <laughs> you. So, 
Um, where are you gonna... Yeah. How do you intend to approach this? It appears that the doors for boarding that you would normally get on and off the train with are these huge ramps. Uh, one of them will be inaccessible because it's definitely going to be buried. And the other one is a good 60 feet in the air and is also closed. Mm. Hmm. Would there be any other entrances? Maybe on the roof? Yeah, yeah it's not like... Um, the main gates. Yeah, it's not like emergency ladders or something like that. Yeah. Um, emergency exits. There are a few. Um, if you went well, round you and come at it from the even... other side, you, you might... to roll investigation? That might work. <laughs> hmm. uh, I'm going to assess Matthias if he's going to roll. Yeah, I'm definitely rolling. All right. I mean, I'll, I'll roll again because you're assisting me, sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I still did the best. Oh, necessary. No, well. <laughs> Okay, Cause there's no point in me rolling. So, 21, 20, 18, 12. Okay, so you do manage to find... Oh, Wakili. Wakili. Ooh, you are quiet, Mac. Ooh. Yeah. Turn back up. Here, Mac, uh, say something? Yo. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Phone number, turn you off. I just here. haven't said much. Sorry. Yeah, no. Okay, um... So, uh, just like changing the way we're doing things, things like this, like investigations, history checks, um, that kind of stuff where everyone's involved. I'm going to assume you guys are going to communicate things to each other. Please state yeah. other if otherwise, because I'm just going to give you um, a bit of rough information based on everyone's total kind of combined. Yes. Um, okay. If there are crits, there will be uh, they'll be sort of handled separately. But other, other than that, I'm just going to do it for this, just because it'll be quicker. It's just a slight way yeah, of changing sure. the way we're doing things, but hopefully it'll just speed things along a bit. Uh, so, this is kind of uh, around 18, 20 average. So, um, with that, you guys managed to deduce that there will there are a number of um, entrances and exits on either side. Um, you can see doors, ladders, that kind of stuff, uh, as you suggest. And perhaps on the other side, it looks like that where, just about where it stops being buried in the mountain, perhaps there's um, may maybe some that would be accessible. And if you take about half an hour going, uh, finding a way around, you might be able to do that. You also might be able to find a way in through the underside by just going up the mountain to where, to right where it juts out of the mountain, because there's uh, lots of broken stuff around there and bits that have been torn out, and you might How be able to get the in there. Um, it is about three hundred feet tall. Oh, uh, I thought it was thirty. Whoops, yeah. wrong. This is you over there. No. no. It's yeah. about 300 feet tall, 300 feet wide, and about half of that sticks out from the mountain. The other half is buried in. So it's about uh, 150 feet sticks out, and then it's 300 feet up. Uh, which that's three turns of max movement for me, jeez. Puts it actually, yeah, it's about 60 feet up to the start of the um, ramp things from the side, and taking into account that's probably about 260 feet up from the actual mountain itself. Okay. Are there yeah. normally ladders on the, um, well, oh, no, said that... never mind. There are some. There are They're not. Um, this train is of a different design to Coria. The internals will probably be different because it looks very different up close. I mean, far away, it's a train. You can't see very much detail when it's uh, 120 miles away. It's a blue thing on the horizon. Uh, but from up close, it looks very different. Um, and, you know, like, a lot a lot more... Coria is a home. It's a city. It's a place where people live. And it has that air of homeliness about it, even as a giant 300 foot tr uh, tall train. But there are, you know, there's washing lines hanging outside and there are um, flower pots and things and people have made it their home. This doesn't have that appearance. It has very hard and utilitarian. There's no fancy paint jobs. There is no um, one of the things on Coria is it has a huge greenhouse on top. This doesn't have that. Um, th this is very much uh, appears to be harder and more utilitarian. In design. Okay. Um, is there anything well. to suggest that this wasn't intended for civilian, but rather perhaps military usage? Um, other than um, you never having heard of or seen anything along those lines, um, not really. There, there's nothing that uh, signifies anything. It just appears much harder or. Um, Maybe maybe if it was for civilian use, they were just under stricter rules or something like that, but it, it doesn't have any of the stuff. 
it also, alternatively, it could be this has been here for a very long time. It could have been that the paint's all worn off, or um, things like washing is clearly not going to be here because it's been flung up a mountain, or, you know, the plants have all died, or something like that. It is somewhat overgrown and a bit hard to tell, but... Yeah. I would recommend we um, check around the bottom of the train and the other side. And if that, there doesn't appear to be an entrance there, we can enter through the roof. Yeah, well, we're going to have to find a way to the top anyway. I don't expect to find anything mm. in the slums. Yeah. Would the bottom part be near the slums, or...? The lower down on Coria. You don't know about this, but on Coria, yeah. uh, the lower down tends to be um, closer to uh, the rail, so they get a lot more vibration yeah. and noise and stuff, so the richer folk live up, up near the top. Yeah. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Okay. Well, it'd be easier to enter through the bottom, but entering through the top would definitely be a benefit. If you want, I can climb up there pretty fast. I can fly up there. Yeah, that's a fair point. I think I can move. I can actually probably climb faster than with a ladder. I can probably climb faster than you can fly. He moves at his um, thingy speed. With a ladder, you move at your climb speed. I think. Uh. I don't know I what think, climb speed is. I, I think it's... your climb speed is halved. Yeah, I believe it's half your movement. Yeah. I would still move at 45. Oh, max. Yeah. If you sprint it. I don't think yeah, you can that's sprint over. I don't yeah. think you can do that. Mm -hmm. 10 feet really? per 10 feet climb. 10 feet for 5 feet climbed. So. Yeah, so half. Yeah. Uh, so basically, yeah. it counts as like... Yeah, I, I don't know if um you can sprint on pause. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think so, and it would make sense. It's gonna take her a minute to reach the top, mm. though. It's a big train. Okay, I'm yeah. gonna look for entrance points, I guess. Okay, well, um, are you flying around and looking at the top and the sides and things? I can't, I? Mm, yes. Are okay. you uh, looking at the underside? Are you looking at the side um, away facing away from the mountain? Are you looking at, like, like no. whereabouts are you looking? Like, side, stop. Okay. Like so, obviously, you, you see the, uh, you rolled 20 in your investigation, so you do see the, the possible entrance at the bottom. Uh, on the sides, you notice a few doors. Um, they appear to be very heavy, thick set metal doors. Um, you're not sure if you'd be able to get through them. You don't know if they're open or not. Um, on top, the top appears to be very smooth. It has some stuff sticking out of it. Um, like, things that are clearly to do with the internals. It appears to have lots of uh, funnel-like things. It also has uh, the odd ballista or two that appear to be up there. They also appear to be mashed. There are some strange claw-shaped devices. Um, not claw, like pincer-shaped things. You're not quite sure what those are about. They're like metal pincers. Um, and... You don't really see anything that looks like an entrance on top. While she's doing that, can I check the bottom? Uh, yeah. Do, uh, you want to go inside? Wait, I can go inside? Well, the the under, underside, there's a bit where it's sort of torn yeah, out and being damaged. Yes. And you might be able to get in. Uh, yeah. yeah, go ahead and roll an acrobatics to attempt to sort of climb up and get inside. Wait, the underside? Like where yeah. it meets the ground? Yeah, because about half of it is sticking out. Oh, that okay. may have... I, I don't think I understand how this is looking, but you know, it's fine. That might be me. I'm really good at acrobatics, so... 26, okay. Uh, you don't understand how it's looking, do you say? Huh? Did you say you don't yeah, Well, get... I thought it was just like... I, I, I'm pretty sure I think I got it more now. I should understand before. Okay, so imagine... It, it's a square. And then take a 45-degree mm -hmm. slope through it that passes through about the midpoint of the underside and the midpoint of one of the, of the left side. And that's kind of what you're looking at. Okay. With the slope is kind of the mountain. It, it, obviously not quite, but uh, it's a rough idea. Um, yeah. Yeah, so uh, 26 acrobatics. You find a bit of like loose pipes and some wires and all sorts of kind of stuff hanging down. Um, so you can quite easily uh, make your way up. Um, there's a lot of machinery and bits and things that you, you don't really know what they do, but easily enough, you uh, climb yourself up and you find yourself in what appears to be um, a corridor with 
these big, thick, heavy set metal doors um, that have uh, huge, like, circular handles on them, kind of, uh, like, right in the center, these big circular handles, They're very big, thick, heavy doors. Um, they don't have any kind of indications of whether they're locked or not. You can't see. Um, you find that this corridor extends off to the left, off to your left, which is uh, east, about um, maybe 30 feet before uh, there's just this giant spike of rock sticking up and breaking off one side. And off to the right, um, it, it appears to sort of extend a bit and then be torn open and you can see kind of daylight filtering in. Hmm. About, that's um, about 50 feet away. Is the rest of the party within shouting distance, probably? Mm. Oh, yeah, no, that, they're only, there? say, you climb up about 20 feet together. Okay. Yeah. So I guess I would mention this then, probably. Go ahead. Um, I believe I found an entrance by the looks of it. Looks a... Um, sure thing. How exactly did you climb up? You climb. What? It I've look got like a rope. Sure. I could climb. I could climb up, and then I'll throw a rope down. It doesn't I mean, look yeah, like a very difficult I climb. I can climb up as well. There's a lot I of bits can... sticking out. It's very torn metal. I definitely could climb up there and throw a rope down. I don't want to cut myself. Can I start climbing? Sure. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna start climbing as well. Yeah, I'll get it up. Um, I'm gonna use inspiration on this acrobatics. I don't want to fall. Wait, why are you climbing? <laughs> Uh, we're climbing up to the entrance, I'm assuming. Yeah. You just did. <laughs> you, oh, I'm you right up there. You're up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would throw there. a rope down then. Yeah. Okay, sorry, okay. I shouldn't quite understand. I, I just I should throw my... I'm going to tie a rope and throw it down. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, okay. Hey, what, what are you tying the rope around? Uh, I'm assuming there's... I bet there's some sturdy metal up there that I can t tie it around. It appears if there's to not, be... I have a grappling hook. I have it a grappling appears hook. to be somewhat smooth. You might be able to tie it around one of the, sort of, the handles on the doors. That might work, they look pretty sturdy. Yeah. Um, you could try tying it around some of the bits of pipe that are sort of sticking out of the edge of this. Uh... Can I just stick the grappling hook in the doorway? Uh, the doors were closed. Oh, they're all closed. Uh, there should be something I can attach a grappling hook to pretty easily. Let's see. Um, so, like... There's a door handle, you said. What yeah, else it's there? those big, like, round door handles that, like, put circular and it's, like, you twist it, like, on a submarine. I'd... I've well, never been on a submarine. Like you can attach a, um, it to, to death? It's or... like a wheel, like, um, one of those ones that's a wheel you have to keep, like, oh, rotating it. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll put a grappling hook on that. Yeah, yeah, that works. Okay. Um, so, uh, that'll give anyone who wants to climb up advantage on the thing. Okay. Uh, sure. can I use athletics? Uh, yeah, that works. Athletics or acrobatics. Cool. Except, what if I just climb up attached to the roof? <laughs> sure. Do I notice? <laughs> I'm He's still so on your back. Was... Oh, yeah, you oh, were always on my back. Yeah, yeah. You, never, you never came off. Oh, no, I was just sort of assuming you were carrying him. Yeah, go, go right ahead. Yeah, yeah okay, sure. <laughs> 17. Yeah, you make it up fine. Uh, oh, God, I'm going with acrobatics. Also, 21? that yeah. would be... Guys, we went for, for from an assumed pressure difference of, like, 9,600 feet. Our ears popped like crazy! Uh, the, that I was about to say, no, they the, didn't. this world is, probably doesn't have the same curvature as ours. This world does I have the same curvature as yours, because otherwise I'd be factoring in different gravity. Trust me, I'm a nerd. Um, <laughs> your ears didn't pop because you were transported magically. Yeah, magic. <laughs> magic, And bitch. basically, sure the pressure thing. chain... Well, I mean, you went into space, so you could shush. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> clearly, <laughs> there is something... Like that, Ant-Man. So the clearly, there was something changing with the pressure, which meant that as you were transported, the pressure was changed. It's gradually enough that... Only these plebeians were transported by box. I got to transport by space travel. We That's still need... Fault. Hey, watch out, Achilles. Achilles. Acrobatics. Wikili, yeah, you gonna roll acrobatics and Akane. Uh, oh, you're at the top, so. Okay, why are they rolling acrobatics with an advantage? Uh, because well, Akane rope. also. Because rope. Oh, and Akane okay. has wings. Akane can just fly out. <laughs> Akane's up at the top. 
24, okay. So, yeah, you don't, you guys don't actually need the rope at all. Um, the DC's 10. You don't need the rope. Um, it's a very easy climb. You just couldn't climb. It's almost like climbing stairs for Keely. You just sort of hop, hop, and he's up. Uh, Matthias somehow is more nimble than Sereve, but that's because Sereve is kind of lugging up. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm looking up some dead meat. But um, e either way, yeah, you will, you will make it easily up to the top with no trouble. I mean, it's a very light dead meat. So, but... anyone have a way to communicate with Akane? Yeah, Akane, you are up the top. What are you going to be doing? And then, based on that, I'll tell you when well, you can return to the group, whatever. If I don't spot any entrances, I'm just going down again. To apparently find no one because they all left me here. Let me I mean, we'll, we'll okay. still we'll still at the entrance. Yeah, yeah we'll because entrance. um, because she took a rope out and uh, threw it down. I'll say that you see um just as uh, Wakili hops up, um, you just see him hopping up into the train, and no one else. Just as you come down, mm. so you can follow, because there's a bit oh, of time. Cody, you're there. You guys hiding from me? No, Maybe. we'd be doing better if we were. You can, can be kind of scary sometimes. Wait, you can see us? <laughs> I'm just gonna look over at Vest, Vetzel when she says that. I'm and I'm not gonna say anything. I look back at like, him confused. I look questioningly <laughs> at uh, Vessel. Why is everyone Dude. questioning me? I'm not scary. I'm just gonna dust uh, so my is, So is Akane. <laughs> I was being joking. <laughs> I know. I'm just not scary. Don't worry. She's weird, but she's not so scary. So does anyone have okay. a good way to open this door? <laughs> I just frown at sorry. I, yeah, I look at my teeth. I might as well. The door looks like it could be lockpicked. You know, you don't see sorry, I can be very frightening if I want to. What did you say? Uh, you don't see a keyhole of any kind or a lock that you recognize. Is there a window? There's no window in the door, no. Did you is try the door? Can, well, is there a window above the door? Nothing in or above the door. You don't see any glass or windows of any kind. Can I is there any way through the door? Give me the door open. <laughs> hmm? Give me the door. Vetzel. Yes? Uh, did you try the door? No. Okay. I'm going to pull the handle. You Does pull... it open? You pull the handle. Like, like... It's a submarine it's... door. Oh, yeah, it's oh, it's a submarine. It's... yeah, it's one of those, like... Um, wheels in the middle of the door, kind of oh, like that. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to take my grappling hook off and roll up my rope. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so. I'm going to just try and twist it. Okay. Oh, you twist It's pretty stiff. Uh, in fact, it's really stiff. Go ahead and roll a strength check. Sure. I'm good at this. Yeah, that's probably why it's a good idea that I didn't do that, because I don't have strength. Hey, yeah, I'm good yeah. at this. It's really stiff. This door probably hasn't been opened in a very long time. It feels like the mechanism might be made of metal that has rusted together and you are currently prying that rust apart by lev leveraging a wheel. Uh, but you're Sarif and you don't care. So you just <laughs> and you yank the door open and you hear these, these huge bolts inside the door retracting into it and with that it swings easily open. There we go. Alright. Open the well, door. I guess too that works. I was too hard. Right, in we go. I'm just gonna waltz it. On the other side. I'm right behind him. On the other side, you see um, what is essentially a corridor that is maybe um, let me actually just do a thing. <laughs> Does he have a map? Oh, Frost Dungeon! <gasps> oh. <laughs> We're all uh, it's die. about 50 feet across. Like uh, like wide or like... Wide. The quarter goes... Okay. It That's runs good. out of sight on each end, That's... just into the darkness. Um, okay. And it appears uh, to be maybe 20, 30 feet tall. And every now and then extra, along it, okay. you can see like, more of these doors. Most of them appear buckled and bent. Um, as if, uh, along with lots of the walls and things around here, it appears that this train was not designed to take whatever impact it has done. And a lot of the walls and the superstructure has been bent and buckled. Uh, and is there any the doors way probably I can, like... Be openable. But there are is some... Is there any way I can, like, impact. slip... Oh, sorry. Sorry, go ahead. Is there any way I can, like, slip into a few of those side rooms? Uh, the side rooms, the doors, mostly, will not be openable because they're just bent and twisted in the frame and... 
Yeah, I meant like if they have like been those blown that aren't, off at all or like just been. None of them appear to be blown off. Um, those mm. that aren't twisted, um, you don't see any where you are. But if you move uh, somewhat down the corridor off to the east a little bit, you might see some. Um, but again, they are. We go towards the monster, guys. <laughs> um, well, no, because the the first one you encounter is uh, some of its ways on the east, and it's on the other side. Uh, the second nearest one to your current position is on the west, uh, but uh, it's on the side that you just came from. It's roughly where I was saying there's that gash that was torn open uh, that you would see about 50 feet down. It's just past that. Yeah. So there's, like, nothing I can get in through. That sucks. Sorry, first, guys, I'm being cold. The remote first thing... Up. First thing I'm going to do when I see this uh, is I'm going to say Why is everything black and white? <laughs> Wait, what? In dark vision, you can only see in black and white. You, or well, shades oh. grey, you don't discern colours. And it is dark in and here. This is the first time that Sourive has used dark vision. Ever. <laughs> I never had dark. just black. It's mostly just black. Oh, I can have, see somehow. It's called dark vision. You have the ability to see what? in low light areas. It, you can I see think dark, limitedly in the dark. There is some oh. light pouring in from the door you just came through, and so that is illuminating somewhat, but you can't actually see that far due to the darkness, yeah. Even I'll the dark cast visual, dancing I, lights. I, I, I assume it's shit. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Let me okay. Do. Dancing lights. Oh, um, everything's normal now. Okay, I don't, I don't like that. That's weird. Great. Four torch-sized lights within range. They give ten-foot light radius. Yeah. Okay, that's slightly a shame. Either way, you cast out these four um, lights, sort of doing your incantations and throwing your hands up on them. You throw your hands out. They're like wear lights. Throw these little lights out, and they sort of blink around as as they do. What do these lights look like? Wear lights, if you've ever heard of a wear light. Kind of like small, just little flames over here that sort of flicker on and off here and there. Yeah, they're purple. Oh. Purple. Um, yeah, so they shed this sort of purplish light in the ten foot radius around them. And you can guide them around a bit, and as you do so, yeah. the floor in here is kind of... It's a strange material you've not seen before. It's black. Metal, most part by the looks yeah, of it, we don't but have sort a dwarf. of black and... Um, uh, it appears to have some kind of grip built into it. it it's it's got like grooves carved into it that give it a good grip. But um, other than that, it's strange. You've never seen anything like it. Um, Too bad we don't have a dwarf to make the GM bullshit um, uh, medals. <laughs> GM bullshit just, or GM prepared? I just <laughs> lean down and kind of rub fingers across the metal, just feeling it and go, "Well, this place seems to be well made." So whatever caused these damages is most likely extremely strong. Oh, I like the sound of that. Well, as I was about to say, do we all want to continue on forward? It seems as though we're just throwing ourselves into danger at this point. I think that was the idea of coming up here. Well, we well, don't we know what we're about to fight. We retreated when those lopers came at us and we went back and learned about them. Ah, uh, you guys retreated. I did not. We didn't retreat. Yeah, and you almost died like four times, Vestal, so shush. No, I was talking about... You guys are talking about one that we fought the first Loper. Yeah, the first yeah. Loper. No, and that's his, still his response. <laughs> uh... way, I say, just kind of like dusting my hands off. I don't think we should be... I don't think we should just move about as we want. I think we should keep a line, a battle stance, if you will. I mean, yeah, we should always be ready to kill something, but, I mean... Ah, yeah, come we'll... on, it'll be oh, fine. I want place... money, really. This place has been abandoned for years, probably. Is there any signs of anything being through here recently? Droppings, uh, um, maybe footsteps in the dust. Yeah, go ahead and roll a... Uh, what would that be, survival or... Investigation. Investigation. Go ahead and roll investigation. Okay. Do -do. Hey, I rolled terrible. <laughs> Even um, though it came up as a 17 on my dice. Handle? For, um, I was like, can I help Sarif? Because I won't be able to see the ground to like look, because I'm on top of Sarif. 
You can roll if you want to. I'm going to help Pandal because I have a negative one. <laughs> Alright, so you get advantage. advantage. Yeah. You're going to help the person that has negative one. Huh? Tom understands mechanics. Okay, <laughs> and that's panel three. Of the Matthias, Matthias got up for a is bit. Up for a bit. I don't know if he's here anymore. So, yeah, he had to yeah. go see something. So let me just. Yeah, um, someone was calling. Someone. I'm calling him. Do it, do it, do it. I will just. Um, I'll roll for him because this is the sort of thing he would do. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I think we can all agree that he would roll, especially as he does have. So that's a twenty-seven. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. See, see these Everyone orange die. Everyone else is pointless. See these orange die. These orange die got my back. Yeah. Um. Okay. Right. So with uh, those sorts, so you guys don't um see all that much, but you you know that there's a sort of a thick layer of dust on many of the surfaces, not the floor. Not that there's nothing on the floor, but there is a thick layer of dust on other surfaces, on the walls, on the ceiling, on everything that isn't the floor. Uh, but the floor does appear to be dust-free. The there is also some bizarre markings that Matthias notes on the far wall and points out that just on the edge of this light, it, um, where it appears as though the dust has been blown away in small gusts. As it has, um, as if a, a very fine wind has come along and just blown off just a very small portion of the dust. That's oddly specific. <laughs> well, it, it's a sort I of a mention, gradiented. I'm, I might like, have flown by it. <laughs> it's this kind yeah. of like gradient of dust that's there and then not there and then there again as you sort of go down the wall. So it, it looks kind of like it's been blown so. off as opposed to. There's no dust on the floor. There's none on the floor at all. That's strange. Don't you find it weird that there's no dust in here if this place is supposed to be abandoned? Well, there's dust everywhere, there's, just not on the floor. There's dust everywhere, just not on the floor. That decent... is a bit weird, but... I mean, there's something to kill. What shall I like? Yeah, this must be some sort of monster that would pick it all up, because otherwise it would just leave tracks. Maybe a winged beast, a serpent. Maybe the floor itself does it? That would be strange. Oh, I, I want to my apartment. That would be very strange. Well, I've never seen this material before. I don't know if you all have. Oh, By no the way, it's concentration up to a minute. Um, Jargon, every time it goes out, I'm just going to recast it. Yeah, I just sort of see you that doing that. Um, <laughs> okay. This is kind of annoying with Gavin here, because I'm not sure if he would... what he would do. Either way, I stand up and just draw my sword. Which... is there any open... are any of the doors able to be, like, opened or anything? Um, Could I pry any of them open? Oh uh, yeah, that's probably the better option. <laughs> As you look along the walls, you find a couple of doors that might be openable. There's one off to the west that appears to be uh, basically, the the corridor that that you originally came into, there was a bit that appears torn open that's missing, and then uh, across from that you can see, um, where like, um, the the metal has all been sort of folded in and crunched together, and you can then see on the other side that, um, that is that there is a door that would open into the other side there. You can also see that across the way from you. Um, on the same side as the sort of strange markings on the wall, that there is... Sorry about that, guys. Welcome hey. back. Uh, hey. hey, you're back. That there's a door that might be Just openable. Alright, quick recap. Um, you all rolled investigation to have a look around to see if there's been anything through here. I rolled for you because I assumed that that was the thing you would do. Because everyone else did. Yeah. Uh, you got the highest, 26. You note that Sweet. there's dust everywhere, but not on the floor. Absolutely nothing on the floor. The walls, the far side, they have um, this kind of gradient of dust that has been blown off in very small areas. It, it looks as though a very fine wind has come along and just blown off just a very specific portion. Just every now and then along the wall. Um, and Sarif is just looking for doors that he might be able to go through. Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, did you, you did catch the bit about the floor being made of uh, black metal with grooves in it, yeah? 
Um, no, I did not. It's made of a black metal. Yeah. You haven't seen it we, before. Basically, we need a dwarf. And it has grooves in it that give it a sort of really good grip on you. Like, you can feel it beneath Groove. your feet. It's very grippy, but it's got these slight grooves in it that give it that. Okay. Uh, but other than that, it appears to be made of a black metal that you haven't seen before. Or that you don't recognise. Okay. Well, so um, there's no dust on the floor. No. Nope. There's none. Nope. Um, guys, something came through here recently a lot. Yeah, it was a Roomba. <laughs> what? <laughs> a what? Roomba. You know those little pebbles. Oh, okay. Little tiny ones. <laughs> Ours didn't make that sound. Oh my god. But yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, so you said there was an open door. Yeah. Whoops. Right, Jorgen? Oh, that's right. Oh, he's muted. Hmm. I have no idea what's yeah. happening. Sorry about that, my, guys. My that apologies. was something I couldn't ignore. Sure. Um, um, so, yeah, there are two openable doors that you might want to try. One that is uh, across from the way from you and to the. Uh, When would I? When is it? When you said that? And one that's to the west. That's yeah. yeah. One that is basically goes south and east, and one that that is to the east and goes south, and one that is that goes north but is to the west. Can I open the one that's closer? So I'll see. Okay. They're oh, kind of roughly same? different, same different, same distance ish. Is it the same? Uh, do we? Can we see if it's the same kind of door as the... They both appear to the, be the, the same kind of door. Which one did you mention they first? You mentioned the east the one same first, door. right? Okay. You uh, mentioned the east one first, right? Uh, I'm not going to comment because that's metagame, effectively. <laughs> well, no, I'm just, I'm just saying. Uh, I don't know, because I don't want... <laughs> play mind tricks with me. Yes, uh, um... Let's just go this way, and I'm going to walk towards the one in the east. <laughs> okay, so you head um, down, so it's to your left, effectively. I'm just going to go with those directions instead of northeast, southwest, because it's going to confuse me. Um, hmm. So it is uh, to your left, you see a, um, a door. It, it appears to be pretty much the same. And go ahead and roll strength to try and open it because again, it is uh, really geez. rusted and very, very hard to open. Ugh, that's not so good. <laughs> uh, close strength. behind him. Athletics. Athletics is clearly excited. Way. Okay, uh, with the seven, you managed to get the wheel about the, the, the sort of metal wheel in the center of this door. You get it about, and you, 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 like? you, you strain, you strain, and you pull it, and it catches. It gets about a quarter of a turn and then catches, and you. Cannot get it any further, no matter how much you Mind push. Mind if I try? Mm. Yeah, on you go. <laughs> My zero strength. Sure. Have a go. This is an alright, this one. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can't even move it back the way he's already moved it. You can't move it at all. It appears fixed in place to you. How did you we roll the it? steam! Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't know what I expected, but... Does nobody Never. have a crowbar? Wait, uh, I then reach into my explorer's pack and pull out a crowbar. A crowbar might not help it's not you. Uh, a I crowbar, it does, yeah. I think it has like a little hook on the end that you could use as leverage. Yeah. And crowbar gives you advantage on all strength-based checks. Explorer's like... pack doesn't have one. Oh, I thought they did. Oh, shoot. No, uh, oh, that's, that's dungeon no, that's dungeon dungeon Also, dungeon explorers, it would have Great. to make sense to give you that, and it probably won't make sense in this because you are trying to twist something. Angular instead the of the burglar's pack also nifty. has one. I, I have a dungeoneer's pack. You know, oh. <laughs> could you could um, jam a crowbar in it to make like a lever, like between the um, pull on it. The girders. Yeah. It is. Uh. It, it's got spokes of like a wheel, and it is a flat metal sheet on the other side. There's no. Yeah, you can't no. get purchase on it on the other side. Um, uh, I'm just gonna try and move it back the other way. I'm the... gonna, I'm gonna actually walk up and just say like, here, let me help, and I'm gonna assist Sarif. Hey. All right. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and roll with advantage then, Sarif. Uh, is it just straight strength? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, crap! Well, that does it. <laughs> so, <laughs> with Wakili's help, you manage to open the door. This one, it, it's really, really rusted. Really like, 
um, in place, and you, you you can feel the metal twisting in the door as you bend the thing, and you you guys even see the uh, the wee spokes of the wheel begin to bend a little bit. I step back, and then it and it, and it sort of jerks around, and you guys almost like lose your fingers as it sort of jerks really quickly round, with a sudden suddenly giving no resistance as and you hear the bolts shoom, back into the door, and it swings I fall open. I off and then climb back on. <laughs> I just oh, 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 oh. I just back up, dust my hands, and say, "There, just took a bit of a different angle." Thank you very much. Uh, open yeah, the door. Most of the heavy see? lifting. Cool. Um, yeah. What you see uh, on the other side is a corridor, and I am definitely not putting tokens on a map. Uh -oh. Oh, <laughs> Here's I, clicking. His un un unnerved. Friend thing click clicking. I mean, it's no, your he's token. Not friend thing. I see him clicking, dragging. Oh, okay. It's your tokens, yeah. which means that it's a map for exploring, not a map for combat. Yeah. Why don't we get to see it's it? It's not for combat. Uh, yeah. Once I've put the tokens on the map, I will bring you over to it. But I'm just putting tokens on the map first. I'm he's putting our tokens on the map because he's already put the monster tokens on the map. <laughs> we open the door. I'm just going to like hold up a finger and just kind of like have pause. And I'm going to try and listen to see if I can hear anything at this point. Because that made a lot of oh, noise, and I'm oh, concerned things I, are coming at us. Can I also listen? <laughs> um, yeah, you can. So everybody go ahead and roll some perception, but with sure. advantage for... Uh, Akane. Akane. Uh, you can rearrange yourself how you oh, want. Uh, no, that is Ooh. deception. With the minus one. Uh, no, What's your perception bonus? Uh, my perception bonus is just two, so it's um... minus six. That's twenty-one. Uh, yeah, twenty-one. Right, I nice. can't see anything in the map. Here we go. I'm right, supposed to have dark. that vision. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Also, there's a few lights as well. Yeah. Uh, do you want me to have like tiny lights at all, or oh, do you wait. want those? There we go. In false line of sight. Yeah. So you guys can't see what you can't see, right? I can't see shit. I can't see anything. Do we have sight? Do Hang we on. have sight? Um, uh, so there we go, yeah, that, this is it. Ah. Oh, Hooray. and for some reason you all have... Okay, can you guys... Oh. I apologize for this, but um, somehow Jeez. you all have just 100 feet of light. So what is everybody's dark vision? Let me just go ahead. Um, Mine's just 60. Just put it in chat, put it in chat, guys. Yeah, put, put it in chat uh, and I will. Um, oops, I meant to click the info button on that. Uh, so, Matthias, yours is 60. Uh, is, is, it's 30, 60, <laughs> right? Yeah, well, it depends on how you want to do it, but yeah. Uh, I'm well, gonna... it's 60 feet of dim light, so... Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and... Uh, to just put it like this, can't yeah. I? So, yeah, it'll, it'll be 60... <laughs> Sod all. Sod all. If you set it 60, 0, it will be dim light in complete darkness and bright light if you put any dim lights on the map. I'm just doing it 60-30 because that is how we are doing it. Wait, um, very well. Right. Wait, 60, isn't that with this dark vision? Wikili. Or, wait, am I confused with that, something? That is the dark vision. 60 feet is oh, your dark vision. No, never mind, I don't have dark vision. I thought you had a 30. You don't? Oh, no. yeah, no. Um. Oh, right, you're using the older version. You do have dark vision. Um, that is a, <laughs> an oversight on my part from... Um, how I made that race, and I will show you the updated version once we get to there. But yes, you should okay. have had dark vision. I oh, good. Then. And Vetzel with far Jesus, I'm actually upping your dark vision because, of course, I am. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. Yeah, my so you all should be good. You should be able to see the corridor you're in, the door, and Sariva's by. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, okay. Absolutely. So with that. Uh, yeah, go ahead and feel free to explore for now. I'll tell you if and when to stop. So yeah, did I actually hear something? Um, oh, right, perceptions. Yeah, I rolled a twen 21. I accidentally rolled deception instead of perception. Oh, okay. 21, 22, Fires, four... Why do you have advantage? Um, well, I don't. He doesn't, uh, but yes, it's really the first one, one, so. Um, okay, so. Uh, none of you hear anything on your perception checks, I think. Yes, Matthias. Uh... Yeah, you hear the... Oh, actually, no. Matthias, Wikili, and Akane. You hear the faint crackling of electricity off to the right somewhere. What? Do we know electricity? 
You've seen lightning spells. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, I'll just put my hand up. Guys, careful, I hear some, something crackling off to the left. The... Right. Oh, sorry, off to your right, yeah. Uh, the, the right. corridor around you appears blank. Occasionally, there are these panelled walls with occasional sort of uh, beams in them every uh, ten feet or so. Uh, that are very, very, very um, slight, slightly extrude from the wall, uh, supporting the beams. There doesn't appear to be any kind of door along either side. Off to the left, it disappears upwards, and then appears to be closed off with a wall. I probably so shouldn't be going in first. I should probably wait for the yeah. right. You're the rogue. So as, as I, far I as we can tell, uh, to the left is blocked off. Would you uh, say? It looks that way. Yeah, it, it appears as though it was just, constructed with uh, additional corridor actually, that is blocked off. Should be fine. Take it easy, guys. I'm gonna Sorry, if you put away the easy. short, the long sword, and pull out the long bow. Really yeah, Get my great sword ready. Okay. I have my short sword and dagger. Oh, look, there's an edge here. Oh, whoops. No, no. This. Oh, whoops. <laughs> That's Don't run so far ahead, you guys. I say from the back. <laughs> You're the one saying so far behind. I I'm can see you. I'm not really in control of this. I'm just kind of along for the ride. Well, I'm just trying to keep an eye on the back. Yeah. Make sure nothing sneaks up behind yeah. us. That yeah. should, yeah. That's not a bad idea. So, Vetzel, as Vetzel, you round the Vetzel, corner. Vetzel, wait there. You see what appears to be yeah. um, the corridor turning off to uh, the left in two different places. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, there's a sort of a U shape. There's one nearer and one further oh, away. Where does the and I'm going to peek around this corner here. As you peek around the corner, I mean peek, to move peek around the corner, and then you will see. Yeah. I'm assuming you see okay. what you see. Ooh. Suddenly, yeah. there is a line and dust. Is on the floor. Ooh. There is dust, what? there is somewhat some dirt. This is... About five feet down the corridor, where one of those support beams is, uh, which are the little black marks on the, the walls, there is this sudden the just line and then I just think dust. I see lightning. You do. You see Jargon, what does you this hear look like? Some kind of lightning. What? What does this look like? What does what look like? There's nothing there. The thing I'm pinging? You're not pinging anything. There is definitely something there. There is not something there. There should not be something there. Let me reload. Do you want to screenshot it and send it to you? I'm going to reboot my roll 20. That is wrong if there is something there. It may be the creature that I considered putting on this map and then removed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that I'll send it to you shouldn't be there. That isn't. The no, that is something that I was going to use and then didn't. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't know why my roll 20 does that. Yeah, occasionally it, it leaves artifacts behind that don't show up for me. Okay. Sorry about well, that. these this, is, this place is dodgy. Hmm. Are these doors? Lightning up there. Uh, those appear to be doors. Similar doors. Uh, are they openable? And or... even more heavy I set. Don't know. I mean, you're I'm gonna, gonna have try to open one of the doors. Okay, um, um, go ahead and roll me straight. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Why does a dust start there? Yeah, that's a bit. That's a bit weird. It's a bit oh. dodgy. Can we, but... can we see the electricity, or do we just hear it in this corridor? I. I can see I can it. See I don't know about I, you guys. I can see it. Oh, yeah. Very, 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 very. Uh, yeah, the electricity, you can see it. If you can't see it, uh, there appears to be... What the hell is that? So, there are two towers, each um, about... Oh. Is that a natural well, that... strength? That it is. Okay, cool. I can <laughs> get behind that. So, what you see... Oh, allow me to elaborate again. what you see, then I will tell you the results of your complete failure to open okay. a door. Okay, so... This corridor here, you see these two towers, each about... Uh, this room appears even higher. It appears to sort of arc upwards and kind of out of sight, actually, from where you're currently standing. These towers, they they have three tiers to them, these triangular sort of towers that stick up further and then further and further. Each one is about 15 feet between each different arc. You might be able to climb up them. Between the two towers is this crackling wall of electricity, and they're sort of sparking with energy still. On top of each tower... Um, is something that you can probably can't really see until you get a bit closer, but um, I'm going to just describe well. it now. Uh, well, you shouldn't really be able to see it until you get a bit closer because it's on top. You see these two orbs, a red one and a blue one, um, and they appear to be sort of 
uh, surrounded and funneled with this arcane energy, this mostly lightning energy by the look of it, which appears to be arcing and occasionally sort of shooting out from one side and back into it, and between them and between the towers and them. And they're kind of just resting in small mounts on top of these towers. At the ceiling in this room arcs about um, maybe a hundred feet up. It's very tall. It suddenly ramps up. Is it up. safe to think that these orbs are the source of this electricity? Um, you may draw whatever what assumptions like? you want. <laughs> Savage. <laughs> um, okay, but that's a realistic one to make. Uh, you can roll Arcana if you want to try. Ooh, I sure think. Okay, what are you all looking at? Oh, um, I'm oh, still wrong with yeah. advantage, but I never uh, mind 21 that. and 14, yes. Uh, the two magically inclined of you, um, apart from Pandal. Um, yes, it does look as though these are either um, controlling it, or they are causing it, or they are funneling it, but they do seem to be in intricately linked to the fact that there is this um, energy here. But Pandal's support me, so My it doesn't matter. Sight is going up. Okay. okay, give me a minute, uh, because Vetzel broke a door, and... Yes. So, I Vetzel, didn't... yes you did. As you begin attempting to wrench this handle round. It's another one of these handles. It's very stiff, and you, you begin, you put your back into it, you kind of get get low and grab it by the spoke, try and lift it up. Lifting from the, the thighs, not the back, because good lifting tactic. And you begin... Tink! And you nearly fall over. Make a dexterity save. As... I, yes. I don't really care for fall over, but okay. <laughs> it, it's more for flavour. 24, so... Um, and you hear this sort of... A little bit kind of a tearing sound of metal, and it's like, tink, as, as the, the actual circular handle pops off the door, sort of over your shoulder, and, and you sort of stumble forward, catching yourself in time. Um, but the, the handle on this door is now sort of wrenched off, and all, all that's left is this short little nobule of uh, pointy, jagged metal sticking out of the door. I kind of like Actually, pick up the handle, and like, well, at least nothing's coming up from behind us then. Um, uh... Hand me that, please. There's a yeah, question, yeah. Yorga, how much of this do I hear? Because while on World 20, I can still see, like, everything in character. I'm basically entirely blind at this point. Uh, wait, why can you see everything? Um, I don't know. I'm just using it to follow Sarib, because I'm literally not moving myself, so... <laughs> oh, sorry, um, yeah, you still can't submit light, okay. Um, um can you give go. me four blooms of light for him? Yeah, could someone oh. else move me onto Sarib, then? Because I need to be on Sarib's shoulders, but I can't uh, see anymore. Yeah, let me... Could you give me, uh, make me able to control them, and I will just fox select, and then move both of them at the same time? Uh, well, here, I'm going to... I'm not going to do anything else, so... Uh, I trust you. Thank you. And that was the last thing Vom ever said. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, instead of doing that, I am going to do this. Controlled by, why can I not select anyone? Lovely. Okay. Um, That's because it's attached to the character sheet. It's not, though. It's non-generic token. It's an item. Here we go. Uh, controlled by... And... Fetzel. And... Yeah. Do it, do it, do it. Fetzel, you should now be able to edit this small little orb thing. Can I have... Oh, okay. Oh, right. Sweet. So, yes, go ahead uh, and put do, those do they have lights. lights. Oh, it's four. Okay. They give out the little lights. So go ahead and put those where you want. Pandal, these are basically what you're going to be using to see, because, yeah. Can I hold an action? Because I have a lamp. Can I hold an action to, like, light a lamp? I don't want to, like, make too much light. Uh, you can light uh, a lamp. The lamp, lamp doesn't you, actually do too much light, so that'd be fine. You can effectively hold that light, that action, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, All right. You look. I think we should check the other corridor just to see what's down there first. Oh, I'm going to go do that. Sorry. One moment. Yeah. Wait up. Sorry. Wait up. Guys, Wait up. hold up a second. Yes. I'm just going to peek around the corner. No, don't move. Matthias, you yes. popped out your Eldritch Sight, yes? Your... What is yes. the range on that? Det detect magic is 30, 30 feet, yeah? Feet. Okay. Magic, yeah. Uh, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. The floor Everything is like, ever yeah. so slightly magical. It appears that the floor here is enchanted. Uh, it stops at that line of dust, but it appears to be enchanted with what is effectively prestigitation. It's just cleaning <laughs> dust off itself. Well, yet it's oh. dusty. 
No, it stops at the no, right. Oh, wait, it's the other, other way. This floor, Sorry, this yeah. floor is enchanted. The, the clean this floor is, is slightly enchanted. The rest of it is. Uh, it appears that it is not enchanted, and it has this dust on it. And that's why there's this sudden sort of line build up because anytime any dust comes out, and you notice this, um, uh, noticing that you you see like um, Pandal and Wakili's uh, feet, and you look down and you see that as they lift their feet up, that the footprints that are there just shunk, and then they're gone. Um, as okay, it seems to clean guys. itself. Good news, I have an explanation why the floor is so clean. More good news. I'm gonna take the door handle, hold it against the, against where it's supposed to be, and cast mending. Okay. Oh, as you okay. do, you see a flash of arcane um, energy as you hold your hand up, and this sort of spark forms that no one else can see because it's just pure magic. And you sort of you, you push the two together, and as you do, the me the metal bends back into place, and the two things kink, and then they're back together. There's one handle. Sarif, you should totally give that a go once you give us the all clear. Now on the I will, of, but I'm good. Uh, I'm you know, yeah. first. About the clean floor, the floor is enchanted. With prestidigitation. Okay. Three. Uh, you're going to peek around the corner, and you see... Uh, can, can I roll stealth? Uh, just, just in case. Yep, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty good at that. Too. Nice. Yeah, yeah, I have proficiency. Sorry. Oh god, where did my dice go? So, it's half my bonus. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Mm. Yes, all right. Um, so, as you you peek around the corner and you see what appears to be, I don't think you can see very far. So you see this. No. Um. Yeah, you you see the same corridor. It appears to sort of continue on out of sight. Uh, you get the vague idea that it is either a pretty similar setup to the one on the other side, but you can't be. So the, it, it doesn't look like there's really anything there. Okay. Well, there might That's be, there might not. You're not sure, because it continues on out of sight. Um, but it it uh, well, does appear... I'm assuming. You see a very, very faint amount of light that indicates there might be something lighting up a doorway on the other side. Uh, way what beyond your light? vision, but it's very faint. It's the kind of... It doesn't, doesn't cast dim light. It's just there might be dim light in a room on the other side through an open door kind of thing. But it, it's a don't... significant distance away. Does anyone have a light cantrip? I, I do have produced flame, but that's not really a light cantrip. Yeah. I have I'll keep using my dancing lights. It works. Okay. Yeah. Right then. Oh, I guess I'll get And are you gonna one. move? Oh. Yeah, give that a shot. Um, what the hell is that up there? Uh, I don't know, I've got it, no it, idea. It, it looks pretty like it. cool. Make sure that's it a good does. distance. Yeah, so it's fine. Sarif, are you attempting this to open the door? This door cool stuff. Yep. Okay, go ahead and roll strength. Is anyone going to assist me, or am I just doing it myself? I will assist I will you. Assist. Er, okay. <laughs> the midget is assisting. Excellent. I'm basically attached to it at this point. It's fine. <laughs> okay, so, 23. Uh, not quite that 20, but yeah, so you... Um, again, this time, with what appears to be now the non-damaged handle, uh, now that Matthias has mended it, you get the idea that maybe the metal was fractured before, because this time you, you yank it, and you have to put probably more force in than Vastel did. Um, but you manage to grind the metal and um, any rust or whatever, and you sort of just grind it off as you open this door with this horrible like, rusted grinding sound. As these bolts retract into the door. And you can push it open. I will go ahead and... Let's do that for... Yeah, I'm going to open it. Lighting. I will just go ahead and move that out of the way. Oh, I see a box! I think Ooh, it's a box. You it looks don't... like a box. You look through the door. Inside, you see what appears to be this, the same kind of room, with this deep, um... Oh, right, it's a pit. It's this deep pit. It's about of five, ten feet down. And inside that, there is what appears to be a kind of chest inside it. Um, Ooh. I'm gonna oh. fly into it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm in there too. Guys, guys, careful. <laughs> okay, so... Everybody who just went into the room, go ahead and roll me some perceptions on the way in. Sure. I'm gonna try out for this other time. Do I see anything? We're dead! Try it! We're dead! Detect magic. Perception normally or it's uh, You don't see anything with detect magic. Um, d d it's normally. Thing. It's visual. I don't know where 13 so and 12. Where to be. Let me <laughs> check something. Uh, 2GM. Do 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 do. That's what I am. Thanks, man. 
Oh, it's this one. Is 2GM and it is strength is. Uh, oh, really? That's wrong. Oh, well. Um, yeah, okay. So you don't see anything uh, as you enter the room. I want to open the box. <laughs> okay. I'm ready for something to. Like... Yeah, I'm ready for anything, really. <laughs> I stepped through the Something door because I'm going to stay in the door. You might in there and make some better lights. Okay, um, first of all, that's all. You said you were trying to open the other door. Yeah. Okay, go ahead and roll strength. Because you yeah. said that a little while ago. And then we will get to what happens when yeah. Akali tries so to open the chest. inspiration. I think inspiration. Let's get to the mimic. Um, you can use inspiration <laughs> for this, or you could... Yeah. Eleven. Eleven. Um... You push and you pull and you try and wrench this door open. Um, and you I just like... hear this sort of grinding sound of the rusted metal. And it takes you a couple of, uh, like, a couple of moments. And you have to sort of... <gasps> and you just, just managed to get this door to, uh, to open. It was a DC-10, wasn't it? Uh, it was, yeah. <laughs> Is that another chest? You see what appears to be the same setup as the other room. Okay, well, I didn't look in the other room, so I don't know that. Okay, so you see this hey, five or, or ten foot say. deep pit uh, um, with a chest in it. They're walking into rooms willy nilly. Yeah, we're fine. Chests in them. So, yeah. at this point, everybody stop. Akane, you attempt to open the chest, yes? Mm hmm. Wait, he okay. was making mimic to uh, things the other day. I was. Um, Akane, the chest on the front of it has a pair of latches, one at either end, and in the center is a large um, locking mechanism. You open the latches, you clink, clink, you pull the two off, and you've got to lift this chest up. This is a heavy, wooden-laden chest. And you, and you lift it up, and you, you, you sort of creak the chest open, and inside appears this strange metallic object. You're not quite sure. It looks similar to the things you saw on the roof, but much smaller. It's, um, there's pincers at the front that, uh, long, thin pincers that come da uh, come back a ways and then, um, join together. They have some kind of intricate mechanism or, um, perhaps very strange runes on the inside of the two pincers. It's white otherwise, but appears to be made of metal. It has a singular, um, what kind of looks like maybe a handle for one hand, and the back end, um, it curves in this uh, slightly odd way, and it's almost cushioned, although it's not a material you've encountered before. It's some kind of, um, it's kind of like a, a cushiony material. It's hmm. a little strange. I, there appears to be some I kind of... Cool? mechanism under the um like a attached to the handle of some kind like a small lever matthias oh, this thing is glowing with magical energy it is very very magical don't touch that akane you begin <laughs> reaching into the chest does it look like a sword is from from your um it looks a sword as it's gushing that's what i'm imagining it looks kind of like a sword, but not quite. The handle on it is uh, sort of at 90 degrees, kind of sticking down a bit. Um, and no, it doesn't look very much like a sword. It's no, more okay. like, um, you know those, uh, you get those batons that you have, like a handle that sticks off at 90 degrees? Oh, right. Kind of a little it's not bit. One of those. It's not one of those. It, well, it's not one of those, but it looks like The handle like... sticks off a bit like one of those, but then after that it bends in a sort of strange way and forms from what is more of a effectively uh, wide to a more tall uh, portion, which is where it kind of makes a sort of curved, cushioned back end of it. Um, and with that, everybody is going to... Um... Oh, I was about to say, can I, can I light my lantern and get a look, of it, look at it? I guess we're rolling initiative, I'll do that. As you turn. go to light your lantern, <laughs> you all see around the room, except for those in this ten-foot deep indent, you so all? I see around the room. So Matthias, well, Matthias, you see two. In each corner, small, tiny little things that you thought were part of the wall have, like, small, like, little black panels appear. And within each is what appears to be some kind of small red light. Arcane in nature from your detect magic, it's glowing a tiny 
very dim red light on the inside. And it shifts from side to side, and then focuses on the chest, as if it was an eye. And with that, this small metallic box, perhaps um, a foot in length, and maybe half that wide, and slightly more than that tall, protrudes itself from the wall. And two discs on the wall next to it swivel outwards to be effectively um, att attached to the side of this small box, which appears now as it moves to be some form of construct. And under each is a small flame. Everybody roll initiative. Uh, what? Do you want me to roll initiative? Because I was also playing uh, with this chest over here. Uh, Tom Tracker? Uh, oh, yeah, hang on, sorry. Tom oh, Tracker. Uh, yeah, let me just. Um... I accidentally oh, forgot to do my token. Uh, that's okay, we're just gonna. Everybody roll again uh, because. Tracker. Okay. okay, um. Underneath each of these oh. things, a small. a similar to the pincer thing in the chest, but smaller. A pincer shaped Much thing better. in the chest slides out from the wall. It fixes itself to the underside and begin to point roughly in the direction of Akane and Pandal. Uh, and and um, Sarif. Sorry, I'm seeing your Just token. On top of yeah. yeah. Uh, let me go ahead and roll for initiative. I'm on the wrong layer. Click that. We'll just roll this one and initiative. Nice. Yeah, we're using the first roll, we're using the second roll, right? Um, I, I said re-roll, but hey, that's the same token I saw earlier. It is. I lied to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think Dex tiebreaker is a thing, but Wikili, go ahead and roll me dexterity flat. Well, I thought. Um, I think. Um, oh, what is dexterity modifier? Uh, no. Um, just roll dexterity. Dexterity modifier. This is just the way we're gonna do it because I think it's better that way. Twenty-two. Uh, that was rolling for a three there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It looks like a three for a second there. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, you have the yeah you have the same modifier, which is kind of why you rolled. Uh, unfortunately, oh. it rolled higher than you without the advantage. Twenty-three. Yeah, you both got five. It rolled an eighteen. You rolled a seventeen. Uh. They are gonna go first. Of course. I will okay. mark this one oh, because no. it has the initiative. Uh, not that colour, this colour. Okay. So, these small discs, they begin to hover off the ground, propelled by what it, it appears by the disc as they, as they um, rotate laterally to move and manoeuvre this these small devices around the room. No larger than a foot, perhaps. As they move... Um, it becomes obvious that were you to remove one of these discs, the entire thing would become immobile. It is going to go ahead and... Um, yeah, these are just going to make their attacks. So, people in the pit consist of Akane, Sarive, and Pandal, yes? Yes. Well, yeah. Technically, Pandal isn't in the pit. He's, uh, way above. <laughs> He's probably above the pit, to be honest. But... <laughs> feet deep. It's about ten feet deep, so... Uh, his okay. head would be above it. The rest, he could, he's probably terrified. I'm having a bad time, I can't see. Yeah. I can barely see anything. <laughs> oh, wait, so, yeah. Never mind. I not, think I'm looking in a chest, so do I even notice these things? <laughs> uh, you notice them, because as they, as these um, small flames flicker to life under each of the di the two discs, they, they begin to hum with this sort of... Mm, uh. of sort of, of raw energy. Um, I do. Immediately yeah, on your... That very musical, that's usually my thing. Immediately from all four of these, in unison, you hear a voice. It's strange, and it's speaking a language that, um, Matthias, go ahead and roll history. Uh, it... Ooh. And Akane, you can roll it as well, because you are a student. It's this... It's a strange sort of weird sound. <laughs> you are definitely a student. Akane, <laughs> Akane, you have no idea. You cannot possibly imagine what language this is, except possibly that it might be, um, celestial? Maybe? Matthias, you don't recognize it, but you get a strange idea that this might... It might be related to a language you've heard of before. Not heard, but heard of. Which is one that you've read about, because it is a language that is in some of the books you've read. It, it, it 
has some similarities to Common, as far as you know, but from your research, you are unable to tell. Is it speaking half the languages? <laughs> if it's speaking half, like that'd be fantastic. Oh my god! <laughs> it is speaking some form of. It, it's close to Common, but also maybe even backwards. It is significantly different. Ah, uh, that's okay, their turn. Wikile. Um, I hear Matthias say, get out of there. I turn around. I haven't heard anything from Vestal. I move in. You do hear everything that just happened. All right. And so these are four entities, and they're being held together by these discs-like things, right? The discs are next to them, um, affixed by something it would be you'd have to go and have a look properly but they appear to be sort of affixed to the side and rotating freely as if with some kind of joint um and the, the discs appear to be holding them aloft uh, upon the riding upon the flames underneath them is it possible for me to shoot out the flames or the bottom parts you can certainly try okay then um then i'm gonna bonus action can she prepare can she shot and um what's that do kinchi shot as a bonus action all damage i do with longbows is increased by 1d4 nice yeah so okay. kinchi shot aim and uh i take it this is going to be a cold shot to try and Im what, what are you get trying rid of that flame what are you trying to shoot out the flame itself the um, the thing that appears to be resting on the flame the joint where it connects what exactly the joint are you where it at? connects all right. Okay. Yep. That will count as uh, a cool shot. So it's minus five to your roll. Uh, but if all you right. hit, uh, these things have a special property because I did say I set this all up. And uh, that's a that's eleven minus five, so that's six. So no, but yeah. I get extra attack now. Uh, you do. And that's a natural. <gasps> that's a natural twenty. <laughs> nice. Uh, oh, what's with the two damage there? I'm... Oh, the second one is can she shot? In the... Yeah, yeah, second ability is Kenshi Shot, and I roll 1d4, so it is doubled. Okay. Okay, nice. So, originally, you pull back your bow and you fire, and I assume these are both cool shots? Yeah. So, pick which one are you firing at? Pick one. I'm picking up this one down here. Okay, so, you you walk into the room, you look around, you hear this strange voice, and these, uh, these, these metallic devices, these constructs with this red light on the, on the center of them. Um, ominous, you decide. <laughs> Pull back your bow and fire. The first arrow ricochets off uh, off the wall behind it, missing just by the fraction of an inch. The second arrow on the other hand, you pull back, lower your aim slightly, and fire as the as the uh, device appears to sort of recoil in in um, in reaction to your first shot, attempting to dodge out the way. You anticipate its move, hitting it square in the joint, exactly where you intended. Your aim is true, and you deal um, six plus three plus two plus three, which is I will need to check. That's, yeah. That is 14 points of damage to it. However, you hit it in the joint, which has its own hit point thing. As you hit it in the joint, it crumples. The, the, uh, the arrow smashes into it, flying off one of these discs. It skitters for a little bit, and then the flame goes out, clatters to the floor, scattering across, to, uh, across effectively to the left on the map. Uh, the device instantly lists to one side, as if propelled only on one, one side, falls flat onto the floor, on its back, held down by the flame on the other side, and it begins wriggling, attempting to get free, but it can't manoeuvre itself over. It is now on the floor, it's effectively prone, and is unable to move. It cannot take just... a shot, because it can't, uh, or do whatever it is going to do, because it doesn't appear to be able to effectively manoeuvre itself towards any of you. I just shout out, aim for the joints. So it's essentially disabled. It is essentially now disabled. And that was only a... That was only a natural 20. Check. No, no, no. Uh, 15 <laughs> feet of movement, so I'm gonna... Uh, just slide over next to this one, and that's my turn, because I used a bonus action for Kenshi, which was a good, which was a good decision. Yeah. Yes. As excellent. you look down at this, you see, again, on the underside, similar to the device that was in the chest, or the device of the weapon, or whatever it was, in the chest, you see this similar pincer-shaped thing that appears to have these strange rooms and intricate machinery, perhaps, on the inside. Do I see my arrows by any chance? Um, your arrows are... They're both just hit solid metal. They are 
Uh, go ahead and roll one d two. One of them will be destroyed. The other one, roll the d two to see if it is retrievable. Oh. Yep. Uh, it's not on a one. No. Okay, Unfor so unfortunately, so both arrows you you see them, but they are shattered and broken, having destroyed the, uh, or disabled this device. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, the, the arcane runes and uh, some of the machinery is clicking and humming and beginning to glow with its bright blue energy as you look down at it. And that's your turn. So Vessel, you're up. You hear some so commotion wait. from the from the other room. I um, thought I um I had said I wanted to open it like before the combat started. I didn't notice this that. Chest. You did? Or she you... Said, I, yeah. I said it in so. chat a while ago. Oh, uh, my apologies. But I did like, not notice that. As you guys that. are opening that one. Um, it's like as they're opening that one. Yeah, I want to do the oh, same you did, thing yeah. here and open okay. the chest okay. um, before we roll the initiative. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll give you the choice, knowing what happened in the other room. Um, well, I'm going to say that this happens basically simultaneously, so you get the choice to have, to have opened it or not. I want to have opened it. Okay, in that case... Because um, Vessel wouldn't have known better. She's greedy. Fuck the all. Oh, joy. Man, am I glad I went Kinsey. Can can I want to smash some stuff. <laughs> so there's a... Oh, gosh, it was four. As you... Yeah, it's four in this room as well. But there's also five of us. Well, kind of three now. Yeah, as you um, oh, yeah, begin sorry. opening this, you see what, as I described, this strange pincer-shaped, um, what appears to be some kind of handheld device, or maybe even a weapon. Um, and, again, you see these four lights hum to life, and that the similar device is springing out of the wall, uh, and shout at you in this strange language. So, okay. um, ha that having well, happened, you may now take your turn. Uh, I'm going to get, like, a running jump off the chest and jump out of the pit. Okay, yeah. I'm just going to let that happen, because you have the dexterity for that. Yeah. And then... I'm going to throw uh, two darts at this one. At the, I'm going to do a called shot at the joints, here, having heard him. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Um, so it's minus five to your hit, and it's two darts, yeah. so go ahead and roll twice, I guess. I'm just going to do the minus five afterwards. That's fine. Oh, I did not mean to roll those with advantage. Uh, that's fine, uh, they're both the... on left. So, um, huh? that is a 14 and a miss, because one of them is definitely a miss. I rolled nice on the damage Wait, there. you gotta throw oh, no, two darts? Uh, one is a bonus action, one is a... An action. Um, from dual right, weapon light, light, yeah. fighting, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dual weapon yeah. stuff. Um, I don't know if that's the exact rules, but I, I'm okay with it, because it's cool. And you have no, to no, 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 it is. They uh, okay. are the exact rules, that is. Good. Um, so, if they're both flying, you're willing one, meaning out. The first dart, you sling it forward, seeing these, hearing uh, Wikilian deciding it's time to get out of here. Uh, you, you sling your first dart forward. It ricochets as, as uh, the device twists one of its... Uh, the, these discs, effectively. It twists them, ricocheting it, uh, it off, and the, the dart slams into the wall, sticking in a little bit, even into this what appears to be hard metal. Um, but as it, as it has to sort of right itself from that attack, you've... You throw the other dart, it arcs across the room, slashing straight into the joint, just nicking it. With that, you do six points of damage. Um, that is not enough to sever the joint. Uh, and I will tell you now, that appears to have only just hit it. Yeah. I will go with... Um, actually, I will put this here at... Uh, there. And then, uh, how much movement was that for me to get out? Uh, let's call it 15 feet. Because you went down a bit, feet. and you had to okay. sort of go there, and yeah. then out, and yeah. Yeah, I'm just not going to be in there. Oh, I can kind of see that one. Okay, last end of my turn. Okay, Pandal, it's your turn. Uh, as, as I uh, held the action from ages ago, I can finish lighting my fucking lantern. You can light your lantern. What is your light from the lantern? Uh, it's a hooded lantern, so it is 30 feet of uh, bright light. 30, another 30 of dim light. Okay, so the same as everyone else. Physical. Yeah, but it's because it's Except physical. For me. Like everyone else can also see it. Yeah. Cool. I need to move my lights. I can't see them anymore. I don't know see if, I can if grab one. you can tell, but well, you might be able to tell. I don't know if anyone else can tell, but you have now been updated. Uh, uh, yeah, I can. That's, I can is it a bonus it. action to move your lights? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. I mm. So I can see them. My bad. Move that back. Somewhere in there. Yeah, who was that? 
Okay. Uh, okay, and then hearing what Wakili said about hitting the joints, I will see one of them. I assume there's one most ahead of me. So that one in that corner. Right. Throw one of the uh, needle magic missiles at it. Okay. Um, and we did. So it's just one d4 damage, yeah. Uh, one d4, one d4 plus, plus one. one. Yes. Yeah. So ping a magic missile. Uh, technically speaking, I not sure. I don't think you can do a cold shot because there's no attack roll. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll throw it anyway in panic. So okay. So I'm not going to shoot joints. So, bonus action, you fire a one of these needles, and you throw it, and it sort of, like, tumbles a little bit. It's like throwing a needle. It doesn't seem to do much. And then suddenly sparks with an arcane flare. But thighs, you see this especially bright as well. Um, and as, as it does, it writes itself, points in the right direction, and vanishes from view. As you see that just this arcane bolt streak across the room, slamming into this device, kind of scoring it across one side, this force of just arcane energy, um, cutting a small That's groove useful. into it. It does two points of damage, of force damage to this device. I need to get made fun of my kids more often. <laughs> <laughs> and then if my action was to light the lantern, I really can't do much. So uh, You said you wanted to light the lantern basically as she was doing it, so I'm going to give you that sort of was already happening as initiative was rolled. My action? Because I want to be nice. And you're in a room with four of them. I wasn't prepared for this. I am then one. just gonna try and shout at one of them. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna shout? Oh, what am I gonna shout? Oh, I didn't. Pl I didn't plan for this. What, what, what are you gonna shout? <laughs> oh God! What am I gonna shout? <laughs> he named all his camels. He can think of this. <laughs> I mean, that's hope so. <laughs> Still wants to get the fucking damage. What are you gonna shout? Just go to a scrap heap! I don't know. Don't have a... Okay. And it's going to roll a wisdom save with its mighty modifier. Uh, it rolls 11. So it wow, fails. you have a DC 16? Yeah, 5 charisma. He has a DC 16. Wow. That's really Let's good. Go. Jesus. And these have, things have their minus 3 mod. Uh, yeah, so. As you, you shouted it, go to a scrap heap! And the um, what appears to be this very... Um, metallic device. It, it appears to have this kind of uh, less than animalistic intelligence as it's darting around the room. But it also spoken, you're not entirely sure, but this light flickers onto you and it dims ever so slightly and then fall back, back up to full brightness. Uh, it That did not appear to do um, as much damage as you had hoped. He did, but he did. He got a four plus four. He did the best. It, damage. He did. Yeah, uh, wow. it, Unfortunately, oh. it does not appear to do them as much damage as you had hoped. Damn, it's resistant to my only magic spell. Effectively, these <laughs> things are resistant Fuck. to psychic damage. Oh no. Uh, yeah, uh, that's me. Resistant, not immune. Uh, yeah, you can move if you want, but you're on. I'm Sorry. On All right. Get off, so nah. I can't. Eh? You quite easily get up off the ledge. Okay. Um, yeah, probably good. But I want to grab this weapon-looking thing and fly out. Okay, so you grab it. Uh, object interaction. So you just sort of reach down, reach into the chest. No idea what it is. You grab it. Um, and you're going to fly on out? Yeah. Okay. You fly ten feet up Here. into the air. And then yeah. across the room, out. Let me actually see. Uh, there's ten feet. Five, five. Yeah, that's possible. Okay, and you fly it around the corner. Uh, what are you doing with this? You still have an action and bonus action. Um, once I'm around the corner, I'm going to... Um... Actually, want to try to put my hand in the um, handle-looking thing. All right. So you want to try and fig see if you can figure out how this is used effectively. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and roll me, and let's go with investigation. Not sure intelligence. Yeah, investigation seems better. Twelve. Uh, okay. Well, it wasn't a particularly difficult DC. Oh. Um, as you grasp the handle, there's this what appears to be a lever, and it's got like a slight um, like a ring around it, kind of like a guard. Put your finger on it. You're not quite sure. You heft heft it, pointing the, this pincer away from you, and um, this cushion fit, fits neatly in your shoulder. And as you sort of heft it with two hands, you have what it, effectively, as we would all recognise, some form of gun with a strange pincer-shaped device on the end. I want to pull the trigger-looking thing. <laughs> you pull the trigger. Okay. You pull the trigger. 
Um, there goes the train. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Um, as you pull the trigger, go ahead and roll me... Well, are you going to aim at anything? Um, no, just in front of me. Just in front uh, of I'm you. in front of you. No, no th this, the this way. lightning bolt over here is oh, in front of him. Oh, Her. Okay. How far away is that? It's up 100 feet, right? 105. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. So. Let me check something. Like 105 feet. Wait, wait. Yeah, okay. So you, you, pull, you pull it up. You, you're not quite sure what you're doing. You pull the trigger and make a strength save. My parents are cooking. I apologize the, uh, for the fire alarm. It's fitting. Um, make a strength save as it blasts you back. Oh, it blasts you backwards. That's a three on your strength save. It, this thing, these arcane runes suddenly flicker into life, glowing bright blue. And you see this build-up of energy between these two sort of pincer things, which then rockets forward. But you weren't expecting it to, but it, it sort of it blasts you backwards, throwing well, you on, also, onto I'm your back. Tiny. <laughs> uh, well, you're actually medium. Uh, you are now uh, medium, yeah. You are considered prone, and you are blasted ten feet backwards. Um, where is the prone thing? This is what we use for uh, prone. Um, and you're sorry for that. Ten feet back, yeah. You are blasted ten feet backwards uh, across the floor, uh, digging this sort of line, um, a, a bit of a dust snow angel, effectively in the in the um, in the dust on the floor. This bolt of um, what appears to be arcane energy, Matthias, I'm assuming I'm going to let you see it because whatever. Um, because she <laughs> flew past you, so I'm assuming you, you sort of you know, what the f and look. What an interesting sight. As you see it, you see this blinding flash of light as this arcane energy rockets forward. Um, it pierces uh, along and it goes over the top as you're thrown backwards. You sort of you pull upwards on this device, raising it upwards. It fires off way up into the roof, um, and it appears to fade out b before it does hit the roof of this room. You're not quite sure what it does, but it fires somehow. I just look amazed at it, like, wow. <laughs> um, I look over here. Oh, oh, oh my god. With that, you all it's hear this awesome. sort of, you all hear this um, sort of <laughs> sound as it does that. You, you oh. just look over and see me gl glundering, like... <laughs> I imagine I hear that look over and just see a, a just, you see a carne just fly past yeah. the door. Yeah, just fly past the door. <laughs> That's the word I was looking for. I don't know what yeah. it is, but I want like four. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, there's two. <laughs> well, we out? Yeah, we have two. Oh no. Uh, and with that, that's your turn, Sarif. You're up. I'm gonna smash the thing. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go up. Smash. I'm gonna go up here. Uh, I imagine it's 10 feet to get out of here. Yeah, effectively there are divots in it, so you can just climb up it. Yeah, okay, um, I have 40 feet of movement, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I'm climbing up here, and I'm gonna smash it with my sword! Okay, roll for an attack. Uh, uh, I'm also... Well, first I'm gonna go into rage, actually. Uh, <laughs> because I want, I want bonus damage. Uh, I'm gonna follow their advice and try and hit the joint now. Okay. Uh, so, uh, reckless, so... normal, with plus minus five. Alright, go ahead and. Uh... Ooh. Oof, that barely hit. Mm. I think. Maybe. Uh, I think... Oh my god. Wait, is that with the right. minus five in included That's in it? That's not with yeah. the minus five, is it? No. Unfortunately, as you swing your sword, it, it appears just too nimble as it darts out of the way. You swing your sword and you sort of growl at it and swing your sword again. Um, Matthias, uh, Matthias, as he swings his sword the first time, you see it spark with this arcane energy, which quickly dulls the moment he misses. And he swings again, but it doesn't appear to um, oh, I spark with energy. Oh, I rolled Yeah. Um, unfortunately, both attacks miss the, uh, the device. The construct. You your dude. You've already used all the luck on those ones. No, I'm staying with this one because I'm not a... <laughs> nah, once, once you get one that's got your back, ooh, they're spicy. Um, Sreev, I believe you have a bonus action. Uh, my bonus action was to rage. Oh, to rage. So, so that's your turn. Matthias, you are up. What do you do? I just step in, my hand's already starting to glow. Everyone stop messing with the ancient artifacts! And, yeah, I blast the two fuckers up top. I'm aiming for the disc, by the way. Let's make that a crawl shot. The disc or the joint? 
I'm gonna go for the disc. Okay. Everyone stop messing with the ancient artifacts. Yeah. That's my <laughs> job. <laughs> Proceeds to laser beam ancient artifacts. <laughs> 20. <laughs> 20. Okay. Uh, so which auto roll damage. Which one is that against? Yeah, please that's set auto roll damage. And, this is for the... and that's for the right one. Okay. Hmm. So boom, boom. You, you, uh, you, you step in your shot. Everyone, stop messing with me. You hold your hand up. And as you do, you, you, you see the green sort of crackling arcane energy cool. flies out from your hand uh, in a beam. Not, um, my hands. not too dissimilar to the ones that, uh, to the one I, uh, Akane just discovered. And you fling both, both your hands forward and you fire out these beams, both perfectly hitting their mark. Um, unfortunately, they don't do quite enough damage to um, destroy the discs. Uh, but as you, as you slams into it, the first one does two points of damage, which brings it down to that. Um, no, this needs to be that. And the second one, it takes three points of damage as they're both sort of slammed. The second one taking a little bit, a little bit more of a hit. Uh, if I take three, enter, and that goes to that figure, which I'm not telling you. Okay, uh, three will be at just a moment, and... He's at the end of the turn order anyways. Yes. Okay, um... Yeah, Matthias, please, for the love of God, turn on auto-roll damage. I did. Thank you. With that... Um, one, one moment, one moment, my turn is not over yet, I moved five feet. Oh, my um, apologies. Yes, and you've got a bonus action. I don't think I have anything useful on a bonus action. So I'm just gonna go to cheeky thing, do the cheeky thing, and step outside. <laughs> okay. If I see this, I go fucking typical. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies. Um, okay. Fucking retard! I only stepped out because, you know, I was the only one in that room. Okay. And with that, that's your turn? Yeah. So, we get to the, uh, the turns of these mysterious devices. So, Wikili, the mm -hmm. one up here, the one at the top up here, um, the pincer-shaped device on the front of them, it, it begins building with this arcane energy between them. You see it, similar to the thing that, um, oh, you, you didn't see it, but similar in description to the thing that Arcane just fired. Um, these runes and this intricate machinery begins moving and, and it hums and and it fires this beam forward and it is going uh -oh. to make an attack Ooh. Ooh. yeah that hits as it Ow. rolls a 22 yeah firing oh. this um <laughs> firing this bright blue beam that just p pierces through you uh dealing yeah. this strange combination of uh both fire and lightning damage uh the, the beam itself appears to be uh, similar to that of the loper that you that the the lopers that you face down this this beam this constant sort of um uh, I'm getting really yeah. tired really like of this shot with beams with this sort of crackling um uh, yes Akane. not the, not that you see that with this crackling um energy like lancing through the beam and then that that itself how do you mean, how appears do you mean the aims though the the pincer points towards the target um, at, and, um, th th yeah, th there's lightning sort of crackling along the beam as if conducted, and then that lances out into you as well, uh, as, as you take ten points of damage. <laughs> Slide backwards a bit. <clears throat> you are going to give me a DM an SNL game. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get that. We, we just two lasers again. in this one session. And this one game. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry, I've got, I've got plans. Yeah, you more lasers. has unleashed eight of these lasers, just saying. <laughs> yep. <laughs> this one is going to move forward and it's going to take a, a second shot. This one is going to be against Pandal. Okay. It's going to fire. For 18. I told you these dice that got my back. Me. Yep, a similar yeah. a similar beam, sim uh, effectively simultaneous to the one that hit Wakili lances forward with this and it lances forward straight just clipping you across the back not dealing quite as much damage you feel this burning sensation followed by this horrible like clench of all your muscles as you get shocked from this electricity 
not the money maker, not the money maker. The third one is going to take a slightly different attack against um uh what's what's your name? Against Sarif. As uh Sarif, as as you uh, swing at it, it it, it points to uh, to face you. It's the, the the pincer mechanism on the side opening, widening itself, begins to to charge up this arcane energy and then sprays it out in a much wider beam instead of in sort of narrow pinprick type uh, that was firing at the others. This is wide and flat and it sort of carves forward oh. ahead of you. Make a dexterity f uh, saving throw. CD 15. A TC. Oh, my bad. Uh, do I have advantage because that? Uh, does that keep... Advantage on dexterity. <laughs> yes, you do. Against, so you can see. Yep, that gives you advantage. Nice. Nice. Oh, hey. <laughs> nice. As you um, uh, as you see this coming, you just dive out of the way. Well, you try and duck out of the way, attempting not to topple pan uh, Pandal from your shoulders, slowing you slightly, but still effortlessly diving out of the way. However, you are still slightly glanced by this beam, but uh, as it does. Um, uh, as it deals five points of fire damage and three points of lightning damage to you, the, the uh, mm. Meh. and slices into the opposite wall. You can see it burning, a burning away in the wall. Is that not half? Hmm? No. Uh, okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, that is halved because you passed the save. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, my apologies. Yeah, yeah no, that's half because you passed the save. Um, no, I, I was thinking resistance. No, no. Resistance. no. In the line. Oh. oh. Yes. Uh, dealing, I believe, less damage. The line. No, it deals more damage. Would it affect that? Yeah, it uh, deals more It won't, because that one's on the floor. Oh, okay. Mm. Joint, so joint, it would not thing me either. Uh, Pandal. Uh, on top of you. Well, uh, pa on Pandal's on top of you, so, so yeah. he's five feet up act. and thing is five feet down. It only hits on the plane it's on, but it's five feet wide. That's so why I specify like wide and flat. Yes, uh, so okay, it, cool. it it misses everyone except for Sarif. Right, with I'm that, just gonna... it is going to attempt to move out the way. So you can make. I'm gonna smash it. Go ahead, and make your attack of opportunity. Uh, is this? I don't Called remember. Uh, Could shot or not? Yes or no? Yeah, I don't remember if I have advantage from reckless. You did have reckless, so I did have reckless, but it says oh, on your during top. this turn. So yes, so... I will give you it. Okay, that's fine. Because uh, it's so during yeah. this turn, and it is still during. So, yeah. This... Oh, uh, mm. yeah. This is called. Technically speaking, oh. it's not during this turn. Uh, but yes, against I would give the, it. Uh, so are we going with it or not? Yeah, we're going Either with way, it. Either way, that misses, I'm um, sure. Unfortunately, as you swing down, you try and aim it, but it manages to dive out of the way. Um, you are rolling horrifically, unfortunately. No, um, we're the best. Well, your damage is nice, but not so much the hit. Uh, as, as it manages to just <laughs> skim out of the way, you hear your sword sort of just grating off as if just clipping any paintwork if there were any which there doesn't appear to be um just 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 nicking the side of it but it and it sort of has to right itself as it skims out of the way across the room um and with that you there's... Uh, uh, no, he doesn't it's only attack reaction of Jenny, so. uh. that these are going to move up here and this is going to move out here because uh, Cam... he moved it oh hi <laughs> uh, that is... oh, oh god! Yeah, that's within its movement, I think. I, uh, I oh, yeah, that is no within its movement. Those... I had no clue, uh, clue that those things moved. <laughs> okay, so with that, yeah, as this, um, well, actually, it, it's, there's a number of them hover out of the room. This immediately sees you, Vetzel, and um, having taken an aggressive action against one of them, it is going to fire its beam weapon at you. They took aggressive actions too. Uh, not against you. These ones didn't. Uh, actually, you all took aggressive actions first. Um, it is going to fire against you, but I'm assuming Miss. that misses as a 10. Oh. 
Yeah. I didn't uh, want to use something. You hear this this uh, sort of charged up beam. Um, you, you hear it, having just seen the carnage, you, t- you turn around, you hear, and you just duck, and it flies straight over your head, almost almost brushing your hair, but not quite, because that was pretty horrific. Firing forward. Firing forward. Um, Akane, Matthias, and Vatso, as you uh, sort of glance back over your shoulder as it misses, you see this um, this sort of net of um, this lightning that's crackling between these two towers. This energy hits that net, and it's immediately dissipated, building and adding to this, uh, uh, what you call it, the, uh, this lightning sort of net, and, um, as, as it sort of adds to it with a brief flare of energy before it subsides again. Uh, but this shot looks yeah. as though if it could have gone through that, but it did. It could have gone longer than that, but it didn't go through it. Next up. Can it make it there? Yes, it can. Uh, okay, with this, this one is going to fly. Ah, uh, I get an attack opportunity. You do indeed. Go ahead and make your attack of opportunity. Call shot or not? Uh, I will not do a call shot. I'll do this an attack. This is the one that appears to have been slightly damaged by you. For the record. Mm. Okay, I will do a call shot. Oh, very well. And I get an attack with my short sword. Go right Actually, ahead. No, I will not do a call shot, my bad. Sorry. Okay, fine. Call shot. Uh, 26. 26 hits nicely. Unfortunately, that would have been a hit, yeah. And that is standing next to me now. Oh, good point. It can't move yeah, past you. No, uh, it will not. be stopped there because it, there's something up, up, yeah. occupy the other space. So... Uh, as you see it come around, you you just, like, still duck down, you slice up at it, clipping it, uh, and as it does, it smashes it into the wall, uh, dealing seven points of slashing damage to it, oh, piercing damage, from, as, as you slash, yeah. and slash at it with your sword, uh, but it, as it sort of backs, like, backs into the wall, it has to try and right itself, it is slowed and loses movement for the turn. I mean, with short swords, it's going to interchangeable, I think. Uh, yeah, basically. But, yeah. You, uh, uh, unfortunately, there are still more of them, and so this next one flies oh. past and is going to make Another its reaction. attack against um, Matthias. 22! Does that hit, Matthias? That does hit. Yeah. So, as it is, it flies out. Ducking under the uh, the short sword and its um, its comrade, effectively that is smashed into the wall, somewhat it, as it spins around the corner, aims towards you, and you hear this building building sound similar to Akane's. You look over uh, Akane's weapon, you look over at her at the other, then you notice it, and it's too late. It fires, slashing through you as it deals, uh, just nicking you, dealing one uh, fire damage. But as again this uh, lightning damage that is arcing through the. Uh, uh, through this beam, it sort of lances, splints out, and da- dives into you, dealing uh, five damage as you feel your muscles sort of tense up for a moment uh, from the electricity coursing through them. Uh, the last one does not move. One, one moment, please. Uh, Matthias instinctively curses, "You imbeciles!" And as he does, fire just he's breathing fire from his mouth at this thing. Um, Gav, uh, I'll throw a sentinel in chat for you. There are you? Go. you there we go. Ooh, that is a hellish rebuke. Third. Nice, that, that is. That is a third level hellish rebuke. Third oh my level. god. Spicy. <laughs> I only get third level spell slots. Yeah, <laughs> that's half yeah, of the good slots point. gone. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All looks so fun. As you, you look um. Twenty-six damage. Well. You you breathe this fire out and it sort of it coalesces in front of you, and then in this sort of blanket form collapses around this uh, uh, this construct um, and it is going to have to make a dexterity save which unfortunately it's quite good at fail, fail, fuck, fuck, fuck. and it fails Ooh, horrifically yes. oh wait no oh, wait, 15, wait, no. 16 no, oh, no, it definitely unfortunately it passes um, passes its save <laughs> taking half damage can I use my inspiration to give it disadvantage <laughs> Um, can't see it, so I can't cut any words, yeah, sadly. Yeah, I'm kidding. For the outcome. Yeah, I would let you do it if you could see it and you could give me yeah. some reason why. And hell. Yeah, I can't, so. <laughs> but unfortunately, you can't see it, so no. Um, so, yeah, no, it manages to uh, dodge out the way of about half of this fire, but the other half just blankets over it, and you can see the metal of it begin to heat up, becoming white hot. It bends somewhat downwards, sagging in the middle. 
as this uh, centerpiece begins to bend down, lifted up on its two support sort of its discs supporting it. It begins to bend. Um, you feel like that might have hurt its mobility a little bit, not enough to affect its stats, but that deals a significant amount of damage as you deal uh, 26 halves, so that is 13 points of damage to it. Uh, it doesn't look the best, but it's still potentially above half. 13 is not half that. Yeah, I'm so glad I took the set in feet. It's so good. With that, okay. Um, Wakili, uh, you're up. Alright then. Um, gonna ready Kenshi again, and I'm gonna fire at the one that hit me. Once again, aiming for the joints. Okay, go right ahead. Uh, this mm -hmm. one's already taken a little bit of damage to the joints. And you can see a little right. bit of um, like torn metal. As you fire Ooh. for... Ooh. That's oh 20 boy. to hit. 20 to hit. Nice. So... Why can't I do this? As you... Uh, Monk, man. <laughs> you pull back, your, uh, you you pull back the bow. Had, you've had enough of this shit. You pull back your bow. Doing that thing where you sort of... You pull it back by pulling it up. Pull it back. You, you steady. And then fire. And as you do, your arrow arcs forward across the room. Slicing straight into where it's already taken some damage. Cleaving this... Um, this disc straight from one side, it flips over onto its back. Uh, you deal plenty of damage to it. Uh, let me go ahead and... So that is 14 damage, I believe? Mm-hmm. Nice. Yep. Uh, wait, that's double the damage mm -hmm. needed to basically uh, undisc it, I effect. As it slams over onto its back into the floor, prone, somewhat uh, effectively, somewhat facing the wall with its pincer and unable to maneuver. It, again, begins sort of weakly attempting to move, similar to the uh, the, the one that's next to you, but, uh, and you hear this sort of chum, 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 as it, as it tries rotating itself, but it, it can't get itself up. And then I'm gonna use my extra attack to attack the next one. Go right ahead. Also a cold shot, or not? Also a cold shot. Whew, um, that was close. Oh, that's a long sword. My apologies, but it's still the same oh, roll to attack, so let me just... Same roll, yeah, roll just, just go ahead and roll some damage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, nice. 14 Ooh. again. <laughs> nice. Ooh. Well, we go with the first roll, because that's the rolling, uh, which is nice, yeah. because as you uh, you do that, you release it, not even waiting to see if it hit the floor. You pull back pull back another arrow, fire at the second one. Uh, the arrow's slamming straight into this, again, slightly, slightly, this one less so, damaged joint, cleaving it from the, uh, from the device. This one um, flips over, falling into the hole, and actually takes significant damage as it propels itself downwards. Um, it takes, let's see, it takes 14 points of damage there, loses one uh, of its two uh, disc things that appear to be holding it aloft, takes 14 damage from that, and then it takes 1d6 damage from effectively bludgeoning itself into the floor. Oh, nice. Because it is above the drop. Uh, it takes one damage. Ah. Ah. <laughs> uh, as it, yeah, as it, it slams into the floor, you can hear, you can hear it, that one went down with some force. Uh, it appears that if they are higher up, they propel themselves into the floor and deal more damage. That's helpful. Um, with that, um, you um, have movement if you want it. Yeah, I'm going to move up. One, two, three. Hi. See those. Back up. Okay. Nice. I have more stuff to take care of in here, and I'm not interested in making myself over overtly a target. Okay, in that case, um, Vetzel, it's your turn. There's three of them so, next to you. Yeah, I see that, and I don't like it. Um, For the record. Uh, oh, yeah, these don't get... Mm, that sucks. So, which, one, uh, which one appears most damaged? So, the bottom one here, uh, I believe, oh, yeah. is... Yeah, so... Oh, so the one you slammed into the wall, it is, it's buckled and bent a bit on the back. The one that is... Um, that Matthias just burnt, they appear to be roughly the same sort of damage. They're at the same hit points. Um, and they are both mm, above half, but one, not by too much. And the didn't this one take joint damage? Uh, it is not taken damage, no. The one that oh. you the one that you slammed into the wall is the one that's taken a lot of joint damage. Uh, its joint appears to be below half health, effectively. Okay. Um, let me make sure that this says what I think it says. Um... <laughs> uh... Yeah, that is not going to work. Dang it, I can't get sneak attack. That's a shame. Um, I'm going to stab. I guess I'll try to take out the one that I've already stabbed before. I'll stab this one with the dagger of roguishness. 
Okay, well, you don't get sneak attack, so it's just a plus yeah, one, know. but sure, go I'm ahead. Aware. I was checking to see if uh, one of my abilities... Oh, rough. Unfortunately, yeah. Uh, for the record, it doesn't take charges when it is, doesn't do the sneak attack. Yeah, um, I know. I'll yeah, okay, it. cool. Um, no. Yeah, you swing at it, but um, having bounced off the wall, it's somewhat more aware of you now. Where it didn't see you before, by the look of it, and um, it <laughs> shifts up out of the way, away from you. Uh, is that cold or not? Uh, that was not cold. I'm just uh, trying to smash this. Thing okay, down. in that case, it's bothering me. In that case, you swipe up at it, um, and and as it swipes swipes up, you get it perfectly where you want it, slashing down with your sword, clunking it right on the top. Uh, you deal. Eight points of slashing damage. Um, unfortunately, that's not called shot, so it doesn't hit the joint. Uh, but this yeah. thing isn't looking too good. It's now below half health. That's fine. Uh, you have okay with that. You've movement if you want it. Uh, and I'll, ooh. Um, these may or may not get reactions, because not all NPCs do. Bonus action yeah. disengage. Get, get you have that. Why are you supposed to attack? Oh, get yeah. Like bonus action um, for second weapon. Shout something at there. Um, yeah, reaction? go ahead. Okay, Fessel, get get out of the way. I want to try something. <laughs> Shoot one of the wizards. I can't move. I'm not going to move because um, I would use fancy footwork, but I only hit one of them, so... Oh, well, you don't ready. know whether they get reactions or not. Obviously. I'm just not going to. But there appears to be some kind of charge type on these things. That's yeah, I'm just not going to. This seems, it just right. seems like a bad idea. Okay. Um, Pandal. Well, Keely, great job. Uh, just keep doing that. First level healing word. <laughs> and I'm going to give three for serration. I'll be like, you're doing great. Just do what you did, but hit them next time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now you have one D8. Three of, you have a D8 inspiration Thank die. Um, I assume the healing word was on Wakili. Yeah, that was on Wakili. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Uh, that's your I action just, bonus action. And I, I just nod my head as I'm grabbing That's me. more arrows out of my um, quiver. Okay. Akane, roll me a D6. Oh, what? What? Roll me a D6. Oh, it's uh, gonna okay. break. Oh. <laughs> Not the cool gun. Okay. <laughs> mm. Okay. So, um, <laughs> by the look of the uh, the thing I fired, did it leave like an explosion in an, like an area of effect? Um, it appears to have uh, dissipated before it hit anything, so you don't know. Uh... It appears similar to the things that these are firing. Uh, oh, because you did see one of them fire. It appears to be the it, same thing, so no, it does not appear to have left an explosion. You okay. can judge that. What does attacking uh, out of um, prone uh, give me again? Uh, it doesn't give you anything, I don't, I believe. Oh. Uh, it's it melee attacks or at disadvantage, but ranged, I don't think uh, it does anything. Then I want to fire at this one. <laughs> uh, okay, so you're gonna... Okay, yeah, yeah. so... Lift the gun. You level your gun at it. You, you point at it, you've, you've decided that this is how this works, and it's definitely going to work. You pull the trigger, and he goes, Nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> I look disappointed. Oh, it's like a recharge. It's like, got a recharge, okay. and yeah, that awesome. was your action to fire, unfortunately. Uh, you uh, now know that it has recharge. And judging by the fact you, had, you rolled a, fi uh, a five, guess what the recharge is? It's a six. Yes. That's, that's... Six. Oh, six. Oh, that bit. Yeah. Uh, Basically, you roll that on the start of each turn. Six, but... uh... Some things have it on six, some things have it on five. Depends on the power level relative to the party level, etc., etc. But Most of the time, it's five or six. A lot of the time, it's five are... or six. Okay, so, but also, um, this is very powerful compared to the level. Getting up from prone. Yeah. What is movement yeah. or action? Half your movement. Okay, so I want to get six. up. Okay. Then I have 20 feet left. How do you have four, you have thirty feet of movement? Uh, forty, right? Oh, we, yeah, forty was for flying. Yeah, it's thirty feet. Yeah, f thirty-five actually because thirty because no, you're holding wait, something. I'm actually holding a gun. Also, yeah, that got changed in the updated kit soon, so it'll just be thirty, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Um, because Tori, because you can fly. Ah, okay. Uh, Fair enough. But yeah. Okay, and then I have fifteen feet of movement left, which is still not bad, mm. I guess. And then I just want to move over here, uh, here. Okay, so you just gonna sort of get away from them somewhat. Yeah. All right. Uh, in that case, Sarif. Sarif, uh, <laughs> you're up. It's your turn. <laughs> Run up to this one. And smash it to bits. Okay. Uh, cold shot or not? Uh, cold shot at the disc. One cool. D8. Pandal, uh, move yourself yeah, by the way. Oh yeah. 
Cool. Go make your attack roll. Seeing a 19. Ooh, nice. Okay. Yeah, that hits. Um, 14 plus 1, 15. Cool. So. Hi. No, it's just it's just 14. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Is, uh, um, I'm used to Achilles thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, you... you <laughs> bring this time. Uh, frustrated by your lack of ability to hit it, and uh, encouraged by Pandal's amazing words of uh, Pandal, you bring a sword, and you bring it up this time, slicing on it. It, it appears not to see it, and only attempts to move out of the way at the last moment, and you shoo, clean off. You slice the disc straight from, from the body of this device, uh, dealing 14 points of damage, and uh, disarming it. Okay. I'm still going to get wrecked on my turn. <laughs> <laughs> as, as that you, means we could see the gangbang now. As you slice off one <laughs> of its discs, uh, it pings off, hitting the wall, clattering away, um, sort of propels it for a little bit and then going out. The other one flam slams it over and it smashes down onto its back, prone and unable to move, somewhat facing the wall. Um, you have a second attack, but you can't attack anything, and you have. Uh, yeah. I think you've got movement left if you want to. And bonus action as well. Uh, so. Can I? That would be like at least thirty feet to oh, get across. Lucas cheating. <laughs> I just want to show him how badly I'm screwed. Yeah, I know. Be at least like thirty feet <laughs> um, to move that. So, so could I just like leap onto the chest, then leap across? <laughs> yeah. So that's if you want to roll me acrobatics. Um, Acrobatics or athletics, whichever. I don't really care. Athletics, yay! Um, <laughs> yeah, so you can go ahead and do that. Uh, because I'm more. raging, I have advantage. You do. It's a fourteen. Uh, unfortunately, so we've got a one d8. Ah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to roll that one d8 because I don't okay. want to fall. Dude, uh, I'm going to have to remind everyone every time you have the one d8. <laughs> fourteen. fourteen. Playing a bard thing. Yeah, yeah it's literally me. <laughs> yeah, it's it inspiration. <laughs> you just play a bard of sorts and just keep this, keep the die for yourself. Uh, or um, be a support and don't be uh, selfish. Um, so, you you leap off onto the chest. Yeah, Unfortunately, the chest is rounded and you slightly miss your footing. Slip, fall onto your back on the chest, <laughs> and then clatter off onto the side. Uh, basically. <laughs> What about land over yeah, here? I crushed yeah. under the weight of uh, You are thrown off, and you will land over here. Oh no, my mount. You are both prone. Ah! Unfortunately, the DC was 15. From the so sound, from like um, watching and just go. Uh, literally anything but that would have worked on the D8. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! Unfortunately. I tried. Okay. Uh, yeah. So was that all my movement, or can I stand up? Uh, because... you already used a significant portion of your movement to get over there. Uh, I used 15 feet. I still have... 15 10 plus... feet. Uh, uh, so you yeah, don't I would, have 20. I wouldn't would have half, half your movement, so... so yeah, unfortunately, yeah, like 10 left. Yeah. Um, you know, you should, uh, you should really change your dice color. Okay, with that... Yeah, you should. Legendary actions will happen. Fucking fade. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't get that. Oh, no. I get that. Oh no. Go ahead and choose which one you want to attack. I'm going to attack the one that I already hit. So this one, okay? Yeah. Go ahead and, and I'm gonna... roll your attack. Smash it with a dagger, bro. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. Is that cool, shot? Or not? Uh, no, but because I have before, not done sneak attack shot. damage in it, that one moved before it, do I get sneak attack damage? What? Why would Do you I get... get sneak attack damage so that one moved first? Because um, there's no um, other enemies within five feet. She's oh, a Um These effectively happen simultaneously because oh, okay. it's the same reaction. Okay, so fine. basically no, unfortunately. That is not a call shot because I did not say it beforehand. Okay, well, uh, I would have given you it. Okay, in that case... Um, it's still there. <laughs> uh, it is still here. As it attempts to move, and again, you just smash your dagger into it. <laughs> um, just come and it's like, no! And you, you stab it. At this time, your dagger actually <laughs> sinks into it, this horrible, tearing sound of metal sinking into it, and you see the light on the front of it flare up. Uh, and, and then, uh, and it's sort of jittering around, and then, and then as you yank your dagger back out again, um, throwing the thing sideways a bit, and then it sort of hovers back into place as it sort of clatters against the wall. 
Um, it's not a lot of it. And then the light like <laughs> returns to normal. Now it, it sort of sort of dims, narrows, and focuses very much on you. It is not happy with you. <laughs> um, and with that, Matthias, uh, it's your turn. Jorgen, I have a question. Go ahead. So these things are using two flames for thrusters to keep themselves up, right? Uh, that appears what it did. Yeah, they appear to be riding on the flames. Okay. I like um, the music. How, how big is this <clears throat> flame? Uh, it's not particularly big. It's very bright, um, as if it was quite a hot flame by the look of it. Blue, but it's... Okay. Um, it appears a little much more than maybe a torch. Perhaps which, less, about half a torch. Between the top and the bottom one, which is the least hurt? Uh, the top one is the least hurt. Yeah. Okay, I am going to use Prestidigitation to try and quench the left flame. Okay, <laughs> that's clever. Oh, that's creative. <laughs> that's wow. really that's clever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so that moved in a straight oh, line, I believe. So yeah. it gets within 10 feet of you. So we're going to go to uh, here, let's say, and then you cast it. Uh, oh no, it gets sure. to here, because you don't do that as a reaction. Uh, that's 10 feet. Yeah, no. Range 10 feet. So you'll have to move closer. Oh shit! Well, yeah, okay. Move one, move. Yeah, so just, uh, <laughs> you step five feet closer. You bring you bring your uh, your hands back, sort of beginning to um, cast a no, no, very no, no. basic just, spell. I just, and just hold my hand forward. I hold my hand forward and I snap my fingers. Okay, so <laughs> you look at this thing as sort of angry Roy Mustang. <laughs> snap your fingers, <laughs> and the flames underneath it go, and they both go out. <laughs> and then a moment later, they're reignited. It drops Aww. at least five Aww. feet. The duration is an hour, though. Uh, for the effect, not for something like oh, yeah. extinguishing a flame. Uh, it drops. It clatters, just clatters into the floor. Uh, it will take a d4 from somewhat clattering, clattering into the floor as effectively uh, it's going to take the full damage because it's made of metal and it's got a surface area effect physics. Um, that's funny. It that was worth it. <laughs> that, that was, that was so it's yeah. going to take three points of damage as it smashes into the floor a bit, but then the flames reignite and it lifts itself up again, uh, now evidently focusing on you, aware that you appear to have discovered its biggest weakness. Is it is it like psychological damage because its pride has been wo wounded? Uh, pretty much, <laughs> yes. More That's... than um, smashing it into the floor. Um, and with that... You still have a bonus action to move. Minor case. Oh, oh shit, oh shit, oh, oh shit, oh shit, shit, you got up, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me just, uh, no longer prone. Okay, and oh, yeah. you just move away, yeah? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> run over to that cave. So, <laughs> with that, uh, these are all disabled in this room. This one sees nobody. This one is, uh, <laughs> perfect. Okay, so, first of all, the one that is facing um, Vetzel, that Vetzel just refuses to let move. <laughs> Vetzel, angrily, it's going to fire um, another beam, this time directly at you. Is it? I'm going to use my action to cutting words, that. Uh, can you see it? Is it, it uh, yeah, I can this see way. it. Okay. Yeah, you can see it, I can. Bastard, go ahead and roll cutting words. Yeah. I mean... Do you want that? That one seems a bit up to the GM because yeah. he is behind a chest. No, I'll let him. Oh, that's a good point. Oh, no, yeah, you are. Yeah, maybe yeah, I'll I let you do it anyway yeah, because you're behind a chest. You haven't used it. I'm going to let you do it anyway. Fair enough. Take five from its attack roll. God damn. Okay, so that rolled uh, 13, 13, which I'm assuming misses. Oh man, you're not going to make a hit, his ally. That's rude. <laughs> uh, the smaller the the, the that narrow would beam. That one doesn't hit the ally it will just it just hits the target oh okay uh it's the other one that does that requires yeah, a save one, thanks panda as okay no problem panda what do you cutting words it with pick on someone your own floaty height <laughs> <laughs> so as you say this this is yelling of this sort of high, quite high pitched sort of but uh, yeah. small bard from behind small a chest somewhere in another room somehow <laughs> um perhaps yelling at it perhaps just yelling at the damn things in general because he's angry <laughs> Nobody's quite friendship. sure. Um, <laughs> as, as, it, as it sort of like comes around the corner angrily, it f tenses up its beam, begins to fire, it's like, and, and it, it just sort of, at the last minute, it, it hears this, and it, you see the, the, the light on its eye dart to one side, and as it does that, you duck out of the way, and it fires, and then it, it appears to sort of look back at you, and having just missed. Okay. Um, 
Yeah. That's... Okay. The one up here uh, mm -hmm. has positioned itself to fire through. Oh no. Both of you. Matthias, yeah, you screwed oh. up. Matthias and Akane. Go ahead and... I don't know why that rolls dice. Go ahead and roll me a DC 15 dexterity saving throw. Or take 1d8 lightning and 1d8 uh, fire damage. Ouch, this is As it, hurt. it rears, no. effectively oh. pulls back. No. Oh boy. Nice. It effectively pulls back this, uh, you see for the first time these pincers beginning to widen open. And as it begins to charge, Akana, you're not sure if you, if the thing you're holding can do that? Maybe it can. As it begins to, uh, uh, the pincers widen, it begins charging this sort of blue crackling energy between the middle of the floor, shooting it outwards in this, like, cutting some, like, beam, kind of like a blade. Uh, Matthias, you sort of duck down out of the way and it shoots over your head. Uh, but Akane, as you're you're caught slightly unawares, as you're kind of wondering how you manage, you might get the thing in your hands to do something similar, as it slices straight into you. Um, 2d8. 2d8. Um, Akane, you take uh, 10 damage, and Matthias, you take 5 damage, as, it, uh, as some of the lightning still like, pierces into you. Nice. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, you, you have a reaction, but it's a spell slot. So, uh, and with that, the other one down here is going to take a shot at Vetzel because Vetzel appears to be deal dealing a lot of damage to these things. Oh, uh, right through his ally. Um, its ally is. <laughs> I mean, the, basically, they can be at different heights. It's fine because these are tidy creatures, so effectively, so they can be at different heights because they're in the same square. Oh, yeah, that, that, like the, one foot to two foot. Yeah, these things are only about a foot long. They're small. Yeah. Um, as this makes an attack 19. Does uh, that hit? Yeah, that kind of hits. Okay. <laughs> as, as, um, um, do I get my reaction back at the start of the new turn or uh, on my turn? I on turn. believe it's on your turn. Dang it, okay. As, um, yeah, as, as uh, you, you duck out of the way of the other one, you look across, and suddenly you, f you feel the searing pain of, of uh, one of these beams clipping you. Straight across the shoulder, just, just scoring across it. This burning pain, and, and then the tensing of muscles as the lightning that crackles down the beam lances into you. Uh, you take 11 points of damage. Uh, yeah. And we're going to get a bit of movement from this. It's gonna go That's alright. I have a decent amount of health now. And then it's going to go... Mm hmm... Isn't there still one in there somewhere? Yeah, there's still one in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, there's still one in Speaking there. Speaking of the devil. <laughs> <laughs> <Is this laughs> one? Oh. Rockets past. Oh, fuck, there Hello. Rikili, as it flies into the corner, you see it um, swing around and begin taking up somewhat of an attack position in your direction. You're up. Uh, they just don't stop coming. Prepare Kenshi, just kind of breathe in, focus my key. Aim at this guy. Here's the first shot. Does Another. That... Oh wow! <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, that is called wow. shot. That is called shot. Okay. Um. Holy fuck. Uh, Thirteen point plus five plus thirteen. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> okay. So. This is yeah. like what, twenty-four damage. Twenty. That's a ton of damage. Uh, can I have some of those? That's twenty-four damage. Yeah. Can I have some Ouch. crits? Yeah, you can change dice You can have crits. <laughs> Screw off. Yeah. As as you just pull back your arrow and release it, smashing it into the uh into the com completely brand new undamaged um construct here as it just slices off one of one of these discs and again you hear it smash over onto its back as another one of these you D-wing in a single shot. Getting good at this. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Then I'm going to move through. up one, two, I don't know if you three. can move and take an extra attack by default rules, uh, but I don't really care if you do. Three, four, five. Um, Hi. Don't shoot oh, the one in front of me, I want uh, it. I kill. Yeah, I was about to say, um, no, I, I've seen the attack. I know that they can do that um, uh, lance attack sort of thing. Uh, the so, lance beam. Yes, you do. Don't move to me. So I'm going to use my extra attack on, I'm going to use my extra attack up here on this one. Okay, go right ahead. It is a cold shot. Roll for it. Ooh. Ooh. 20. Uh, 15. Ooh. Just hits. As you uh, pull back your bow, and I'm beginning to think you are incapable of not. No, you, you can just not de wing these. You just don't. Alright. I know. Um, <laughs> this dice color, though. That's this one. You pull back, and 
uh, you, you let go of this, uh, of your arrow. Again, just, just as you pop around the corner, letting, letting another arrow loose, see, prepared, and having just witnessed it as it's just beginning to close its pincers back together again. Uh, as it, it slices into the wing of this, uh, the wing, the disc of this, uh, construct. Again, you manage to take out the wings, uh, effectively. In a single shot. Rendering he... another one of these devices inert. As it smashes onto the floor. Um, uh, All yeah, right, that's, so that's your turn, basically. There's a little bit of movement left. I still have a bit of movement left. Yeah. Six, seven, eight. Okay. Okay. And note, it doesn't take an attack of opportunity at that. That's all. Yep. I don't trust you. Um, <laughs> I'm going to um, stab it with my dagger of roguishness, and since I have rakish audacity, I can use sneak attack if I hit. Go right ahead. Cool shot or not? Uh, not. Oh, that's a shame. Okay, uh, yeah, 27 <laughs> hits, so go ahead and roll me. Sneak attack. Oh! Holy oh. fuck. Uh, I will let you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, oh Markov, God. you've used one charge as yeah. you deal. Uh, yeah. 29 points of damage. There, there, there. I'm not the person who's dealt the most amount of damage in this game. <laughs> How do you want to do this? <laughs> oh. I just want to glare at it after his buddy shot me and shove the dagger into its eye and I grab the back of it and just shove it deeper and deeper into the eye of the <laughs> Okay, oh. so this the and so fury building in, in your eyes uh, and you can see this thing looking back with even just, just an, a light appears to radiate that same anger. You pull your dagger up and just smash straight in the face. You see the, uh, the black um, panel appears to crack as if it was glass but doesn't fall apart. And then when they're unsatisfied with your uh, now evident victory, as the flames begin un under it, begin to sort of um, flicker and, and begin to die, you smash it into the wall, and then smash your other fist into the dagger, smashing this even further in. You can see the entire front of it concaves in. It is very dead. <laughs> okay, uh, then I'm going to... It is 21 points of HP dead. Yeah. 20, 22. <laughs> 20 wow. minus 22 points of dead. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's 30 foot. So I can easily Ain't get no there. kill like overkill. And then I'm going to stab this into my short sword. All right, go for it. Cool or not. not oh, okay. Oof. Doesn't matter. Well, then. But this time, as you were slightly uh, audacious from your victory, you waltz forward and attempt to slash out at it. Uh, but unfortunately, um, uh, uh -huh. you, you managed to just knock it a little bit. And uh, the sword is almost wrenched from your hand, uh, not okay, not quite, hand. not quite lost as you catch it in midair, backwards somehow. But um, and you flip it around in your hand, ready yourself again. But no, the attack is horrifically missed. Okay, that's fine. Um, and that, I assume it's Pandle's turn. Yeah. Pandle, you're uh, up. Yes. Use half my movement to get up because I am prone. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, can, I, can I then scramble on top of said chest for five? Yeah, go for it. Uh, you don't have to roll. It's a, he only had to roll because he was jumping onto it. Ah, uh, yeah. See, that's the rub. Now I want to try and jump <laughs> over here. Okay, now you have to roll. <laughs> acrobatics <laughs> or athletics? Yeah, acrobatics, please. Okay. Well, that was almost ten. Three. That okay. Was three. You make it just as you you leap <laughs> forward, and you feel uh, as one foot clips the edge and one foot. Clips off the edge and you quickly get it forward, leaning forward, it's harder to catching lean on your foot. The chest than it is on the ledge. Oh, yeah, it was jumping yeah, onto the chest, though. Did you see? Otherwise, yeah, it would have been okay. because yeah. Um, as as you, you nearly lose your footing, but not quite. You good? That's just movement. Uh, then I'm just gonna like get up here to three and give him another D8 because I literally can't see anyone else and I have no movement left. Okay. So uh, that's me. I can't. You dash. You're up. Uh, roll me a D6. I could. Uh, yep. It's a bonus action to borrow so borrow inspiration though. I should probably yeah, be no, rolling so the d6s. Spot. Okay. Oh yeah, dash. Yeah. Mm. Well, I don't know. Just because you're fancy. Okay. Yeah, I this is gonna be blowing up in his hands. In your hands. <laughs> I hope not. Um, what do you wonder? The device in your hands appears not to have worked last time you attacked, and yeah, I don't want to use it. I just want to do a magic missile. at... <laughs> The only one that's left. 
because the there rest of them, left, oh, one the rest of them all appear to have not uh, one of their desks missing, or be completely eviscerated from Vestal. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. And just that at the one left. Yeah. Okay. Um. And I, I, I guess I fired at the at the joints. Uh, you, you can't, can't call it because it, um, there's no attack roll, so you can't do a called shot. Otherwise, it would be overpowered. So, um, <laughs> you look up at it. You look down at the thing in your hands, and you just drop it. You, uh, well, you just sort of drop one hand, begin casting incantations, and throw forward as if you were like throwing a, a tennis ball or something. Although from your palm leaps these uh, three small little missiles, that arc around and sp arc spinning around each other, pass uh, passing through any defenses this thing could possibly have, smashing into it from all sides. Uh, you deal 14 points of force damages. Um, bits of it being crumpling in on, on itself just from the pure arcane force. It's looking very damaged, but it's not down yet. Uh, Don't mess with me, bitch. <laughs> you have a bonus action of movement if you want it. Um, no. All right. Sorry. It should move. You're up. I'm gonna stand up. Okay. Uh, then I'm gonna clamber up to where Pandal is. Mm -hmm. uh, pick him up and put him on my shoulders. Okay. Uh, so that's 10 feet. Plus 20 for standing up. Uh, yeah. So I have another 20. Mm -hmm. Wait. Uh, 10 plus 20. You've used 30, don't you have 40? Or do you have 50? No, no, uh, yeah, I have. Uh, Can I say? <laughs> yeah, another 10 feet. So. Right, so. Ah! Oh! Uh, th I'm throwing a javelin, bugger. Nice. Okay, go uh, for it. Roll, it. roll an attack. Is it 30 feet? Uh, I pulled the Japan out of Sarif's bag and 25. handed it to him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sure. <laughs> cool or not. Uh, no, I'm just throwing the thing. Okay. Die already! Remember? Oh, and Bardic. fortunately... Bardic. Bardic. Um, inspiration. Bardic. Oh yeah, Bardic, Bardic inspiration. inspiration. Go for it. God, it is the XP level 3 video, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Christ. How do you want to do this? Yes! Um, can I just, like, and I just pissed off as all hell, <laughs> I'm just gonna throw the javelin uh, in a way that it just collides with it, then keeps going, and pins it to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So, uh, as it begins, um, you, you see the it be, the, the metal that being weakened by uh, Akane's um, uh, magic missile, as it slams into it from multiple sides. With, with this sort of roar of Cerevi anger, you just launch this javelin forward as Pandor puts it in your hand. You're like, that's a good idea, throw. And you throw it and it just sails through the air, smashing this thing straight through the eye and then straight st out the back and pinning it to the wall. Um, and, and with that, uh, we are going to leave combat time for now. And I'll leave the tracker still up and we'll just use these initiatives. Uh, but otherwise, we're going to leave combat time for the moment. Okay. okay. Uh, I am hurt. So. Okay, yeah, guys. Me first, too. Things, first things first, how's everyone doing? Uh, I'm, I'm fine. Good. I'm, I lost 10 health. I'm fine. I lost 10 as well. I lost can, I, uh, can I go and pick up my javelin? Uh, yeah, go ahead and... Yeah. One detail. No, just roll strength to see if you can get this thing off. Huh. I want to <laughs> get my daggers out of this room. Would I still be uh, reaching... Uh, I'm gonna say you can do it effectively the same the next turn. So yeah, go for it. Yeah. But this drops your rage. Yeah. Okay, Twenty-one. Totally. Yeah. So you, you just you just put this thing on the floor and just step on one of its um, I think uh, disc things and just yoink and up it comes and the disc thing also snaps off. I'm just going to assume Sorry. saying the fact I've been firing arrows set them up bits of metal that my arrows are not good. Uh, how many arrows did you fire? Um, four more after the initial two that we've already looked at. Roll forty-two. Can I roll 2d2 for darts? Uh, yes you can. Javelins gonna are going to be a bit of an edge case. Javelins most of the time will be fine. Uh, you retrieve right. one of your darts, Vestal. The one that's okay, uh, embedded in the wall. You just reach up and buck, and it's just fine. The other one, though, it's somewhere in that mess of a drone that you left. Because okay. it was embedded yeah, in it. Um, I'm going to grab the thingy hours. out of this chest. Okay, you go down, you open the chest, you find the exact same device. Mm. I imagine I'm I just, just find one of them. Guys, 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 guys. All right. Guys. Um, 
Jürgen, does it look like this, this thing is slightly recharged? Hm. Is what? Uh, has this thing recharged already? Roll a d6. Uh. So then, whose great idea was it to activate the traps? I say grabbing no. my arrows. I point to that comment. <laughs> All right, what? What? but then what? how did they open in the other room? Fitzel? I mean, Fitzel was the only one there, so... Uh. I, I, I look around me just like with, with, with a, a look of pure innocence. <laughs> guys, you guys seem to be doing it over there, so I just kind of follow yeah, suit. Yeah, see, this is how you get killed. You're lucky, you're lucky me and me and Math well, I look over at Matthias and say, you're lucky I was on point. Yeah, what happened in there? These are, what the hell? Were these still alive? Kind of. I saw that they were being used of some sort of joint-like mechanism. It seemed like there was a joint that they kind of used to hold themselves together. Um, first yeah. time I entered in, just got one in the joint, it fell down. Kept going for the joints. Oh, nice. They all fell. Uh, Matthias, say. are you attempting to see if it's working still? Yeah, to see okay. if they're still active effectively. Um, yeah, they appear to still be working. They just can't move. Um, because they can't so, move, and they don't appear to have any way of aiming uh, this um, pincer like device, the long weapon, uh, at anything other than pointing at it, they are incapable of hitting anything. So, okay. so. Um, They're effectively out of combat, but they do still work. Can I can mess around? Them? Can I mess like around to... with this weapon, like different fire modes or something? Um. Yeah, we'll give that a minute. As soon as I see you looking over that thing, I just say, I can't it drop that for five. Oh my I... god! <laughs> what? I, I dropped just... six of the eight enemies. Fucking so hell. I noticed. Alright, you're sure. I did manage to quench their that flame with um prestidigitation. And I'm actually just gonna demonstrate I'm gonna go hey. ahead and demonstrate that on the one down below here. I'm gonna quench the second flame. Alright, yeah, it goes out for a minute and then you can see the eye is very angry, but it, it comes back. It comes back, <laughs> but Oh, they really don't like that. Um I imagine not. It seems as though I've immobilized them, so well, yeah. while we're going on and on and on about money, and yet I look over at the two oh, other ones destroyed, you guys seem to be more interested in destroying what could be potential paydays. Yeah, my fires. Do you think these are worth anything? Uh, they're yeah, they're, out... they're worth a very good lesson. Guys, next time you see a room, a room with anything interesting in it, check for bloody traps. Yeah, but what if uh, while we're checking for traps, you uh, you get the stuff first? Believe me, I'm also checking for traps. The, I've, oh. I've just a few adventures like this, I wouldn't like to lose you guys. That's, I think, maybe the sweetest thing you've ever said, and it's not saying much, but... I mean, yeah. He's not wrong. You're not wrong. I say looking can over my candle, shaking my hand. Can any of you magically produce water? No. I can, can produce I water, just you? not magically. Matthias, I am offended. I have helped this group. I'm not a cheap party magician. And as I say that, I want to cast Prestidigitation and have confetti go off behind me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's... I just look over at Pandal and say, yes, he's not a joke. Okay, guys. I'm going to give Bokani clearly a wink. Yeah. Um, we're going to go ahead and go for a break, because... We can go yeah. two and a half hours, so yeah, mm. we're gonna go ahead and go for a break here. Cool. Um, and we'll get back to this in 10 15 minutes or so, cool. or however long you guys want. Yeah. But uh, effectively, for the recording, let me uh, transition <laughs> to this, and then we have so we have our fancy new outro, uh, so that should roll shortly, and then we'll see you in the next episode, which here should be playlist because I don't like them down below because I'm lazy. Thanks for watching this episode of Aftermath. Hit the like button down below if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you want to see more. Be sure to click the little bell icon if you want notifications when new episodes are released. In the description down below, you can find links to Mac's channel, where he, Luke, and some of their friends play Shadowrun Paranoia, and a link to Vom's channel, where you can find the stay list of memes. You can also find a link to our website, where you can find the tabletop roleplaying game I'm writing called Starships and Lazy Guns, which we'll be playing on this channel soon.
There's also a link to my Patreon, which supports the development of Starships and Laser Guns by helping to pay for the website and allowing me to commission artwork. We'll see you in the next episode.